Where's Wishbone? I told him you wanted to see him. Yeah? When? About an hour ago. Well, where is he? Up in his room, sprawled out on his bed. We'll get him back and tell again, will you? All right. Well, now, we're back. My name's Charlie Peck. Oh. <laughs> I'm a lot stronger than I look. Yeah, you'd have to be. Ever been in a cattle drive, Peck? No, sir, but I'm a hard worker. <laughs> Let me see your hands. Mr. Peck, I admire your gumption, but, uh, you know, those hands would be raw meat before you spent two days on a cattle drive. Oh. <laughs> I don't care, Mr. Yates. I just got to get out of Silver Creek. I've been stuck in this town for three years. You just got to give me a chance. I'm sorry, Peck. The boss is gone, and I can't hire a man I know he wouldn't approve of. What's the matter with you, Wish? Let's go. Come on, now, let's go. Look, Roddy's getting sore, and you're running more than an hour late now. Now, let's get with it. Fred Harmon. Ever been in a cattle drive, Harmon? Plenty of them. You always drink this early in the morning? Just a quick one with some of the boys. You've uh, ever been in trouble with the law, Harmon? The law, no. Sure about that. All right, I'll level with you, Mr. Yates. I've been picked up a few times. Uh, for what? Drunk disorderly, mostly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nothing more serious than that. Huh? No. You ever been in prison? You can't beat it, can you? Just make one mistake. Sorry, Armin. You gonna pass me for something that happened five years ago? No, I'm gonna pass you because you tried to lie to me. And I got no time for a person I can't trust. Next. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be with you a minute, a minute. Where the devil you been? And where's the chuck wagon and the supplies? Left the chuck wagon where it was. I didn't get supplies yet. You didn't? I gave you $100. What's the matter? Are you sick or something? Nothing's wrong. Well, uh, yeah, I've lost a little curl out of your beard today, Wish. Uh, you must have made the mistake eating your own cooking, huh? Oh, I get sick of these same old jokes about my cooking and my beard. And I'm tired of grease burns, and I'm... Forget it. I'll be at the store getting supplies. Well, maybe I'll No, be... don't. Maybe I'll be... No. Leave him alone for a while.
What's your name? Billy. Billy what? Billy Harmon. Where's your ma? In there. Ms. Harmon? Ms. Harmon? I'll go get a doc. Here he comes! All right. Now, this is water. You saw me scrub the floor with it, and you saw me clean the dishes with it. Now you got a surprise coming. We don't like baths. Yeah! Oh, you don't? Well, I'm not in the habit of having to make my fellow creatures clean up, so if you want to be little pigs, you can just go ahead and be pigs. Oink, oink, oink! <laughs> Got a broken rib and some painful bruises. But she'll be all right if she just stays off her feet for a while. She wouldn't tell me what happened. Yeah, it's an old story. She's got a husband who drinks. When he drinks, he's mean. He's always sorry when he sobers up, but that don't help her very much. Where is he now? Who knows? Well, somebody's got to take care of her and those kids. Looks to me like you're doing just fine. Oh, hold on now. I got a million things to do, like um, I'm starting cattle drive in a few days. A few days? About all she'll need. But I don't know anything about kids and Oops. very little about women. Looks like you're learning just real fast. There'll be no charge. Uh, here, 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 now. What's the matter with this town, anyway? Well, for a while, the ladies' aid used to help out. You know how it is with crusades, all full of high purpose, and then the steam kind of evaporates. But those kids, they need food, clothes, and shoes, and, well, more than that, they need attention. They're just like little animals. When you're working 18 hours a day just to make ends meet like Mrs. Harmon does, you don't have very much time for telling bedtime stories. Don't just seem right. Well, I can't argue with you there. Nice to meet you, Mr. Wishbone. I don't know how to thank you. Wasn't anything. I tried to get out of bed, but I couldn't. Why didn't you send Billy for the doctor? Because we haven't paid the bill for about a year. We're very grateful to you, but uh, I think I can manage from here on in. Here, you be careful. You know you've got a broken rib there. I'll be all right. You sure will, as long as you don't get any ideas about chopping wood and carrying water. Well, those boys out there are big enough to do that for you. No. Now, just lie back and rest. I'll get the boys started on supper, and after I leave, all you have to do is just come out and watch the pot. All right. Now, you boys are going to help with supper. Yes. No! I said yes. No, come no. on. You cut that out now. Stop that. Look here what I've got here. See these? These are potatoes. And they're dirty. And your mother's in no condition, so you're going to have to wash them. No! I said yes. Now you come along here. Behave yourself. First you put them in the water. And then you bring them over here and you get a brush. And you scrub these skins until they're bright and shiny clean. You hear? Then you get some kindling. And all your mother has to do is light the fire and tell you when they're done. No! Here!
Hey, what do you want for that gold bracelet? Two dollars. Ain't real gold, of course. Uh, I'll take it. Fine. Stuff it in my pocket there somewhere and put it on the bill. All right. All right. Wait, I'll get it. I'll get it. You need some help with that, I get your boy. No, no, no. I'll manage. All right. Just put the thing right up there and top of it. There we are. Bye. Where's your mother? Why don't you use a handkerchief? Haven't you got a handkerchief? Do you know what a handkerchief is? Yeah. That's a handkerchief. Here. Come on over here. Bought you some presents. See this? Toys. Come here. Let me show you something here. Look. Whoops. See that? Hey, and here's a stagecoach. Look at that. Real iron. And here's a monkey on a stick. He said he'd be back with the money, but I ain't seen him since. Yeah, neither have I. Well, I ain't seen him since I was kidding him about his grub, and he got so doggone mad. Well, that was by him, that's for sure. Why, she? Well, no, sir, Mr. Rowdy. I've been looking for him, too. I had these lists to check over, but he didn't sleep in his hotel room last night. Are you sure? Sure. Well, I mean, I fell asleep waiting for him. And it was daylight when I woke up, and he hadn't come in yet. Well, I know where he is. At any rate, I'll pay you what he owes you. How All much? Eighty-seven dollars. Much obliged to you. Thank you very much. I have ever seen them so happy. Oh, well, I was just getting overalls and things, and I happened to see these toys, so... No. You're very kind. Well, I know places you could get an argument about that. <clears throat> uh, I got this one for you. Well, it didn't cost anything. I mean, well... It just seemed a shame the kids getting presents and you're not getting anything. Thank you. It's awful pretty. Yeah. You just wait. I you just wait. You just wait. <clears throat> hmm. 
My husband's name is Fred. He's a... He's not a bad man, but he drinks and... Uh, He was in jail once, and, and since then, he, he can't hardly seem to get a job. When he does get one, he can't seem to keep it. I think he thinks the whole world's against him. You know, sometimes a man gets so mixed up, he, he just has to lash out at something. So he... Man's wife is the nearest thing to him. Those are his kids, and, and he can't feed them. And so I do, when I'm able. Ladies' aid sends things over every once in a while, but I wish they wouldn't. Why? It just makes him worse. We, we ain't got much, but we do have pride. And we don't want charity, and we don't want people looking down on us. Where is he now? Well, you see, I don't know. Sometimes he doesn't come home for weeks. Mr. Wishbone. We're beholden to you. All of us. But I don't believe that you had better come here anymore. because I'm afraid of what Fred will do to you. You want to do what? I want to quit the drive. You can't quit the drive. What am I going to do for a cook? Maybe Mushy could handle it. You know that Mushy couldn't handle it in a million years, Wish. Now, come on. Good cooks are hard to find. Why, you're more, one of the most important men on the drive. Sorry. You just sit down here and be sensible, will you? I am being sensible. Now, look, I haven't got too many drives left in me. And after that, what have I got to show for it? There's more living than bouncing over chuck holes and driving a bunch of mangy steers from one end of nowhere to the other. Oh. I knew I should have never let Mr. Favor talk me into subbing for him. After all, I'm the ramrod, not the trail boss. Well, it's nothing against you. I'll tell him that. Oh, swell. But in the meantime, uh, half the crew will quit when they find out we don't have a decent cook. Well, I don't want to cause you any trouble, but I can't go. Why? Just tell me why. It's a personal matter. All right. Uh, far be it from me to butt into a man's personal affairs. He doesn't want to work. He doesn't want to work. Just one thing, though. What's that? Well, it's kind of hard to put. Um... But that money you owe Mr. Case. Oh, that. I ran into him this morning. He said you promised it to him, but you didn't show up. Well, I've been kind of busy. I'll do it right away. Oh, no need to now. I've already squared it with him. You have? Now, you can just square it with me. Well, uh, I can't. The truth is, I've spent it already. You spent it? Now, you'll get it back every cent. You know that.
we had a cow back home. I used to have to milk it every morning before I went to school. Well, we have to teach Billy how now. She was very expensive, wasn't she? Oh, practically nothing. Uh, feed bills all paid till the end of the year. I shouldn't let you do all this, buy the clothes and the food and the... Oh, well, it's just selfish. Selfish? Yeah, I get such a kick out of seeing the kids laugh. I don't know what they're gonna do when you leave. <clears throat> I'm not leaving. It's on account of us, isn't it? I mean, on account of the children. I'd be an awful liar if I said it was just the kids. What happened to you? I'll give you three guesses. You trying to tell me that I did that? About four or five days ago. You came home, just like you are now, drunk. I'm not drunk now. You wanted money for another bottle. When I told you I didn't have any, you didn't believe me. I'm sorry. I know. I am. I don't even remember. I didn't expect you to. Is it bad? Oh, it'll get better. Did you get the job? Do I look like I got a job? Same old story. I got a prison record. I'm a better drover than any man in this town, but I ain't ever gonna get a chance to prove it. this come from? Somebody from the village brought it for Tad. I told you before, I don't want no charity. We'll do for our own or we'll do without. Where are the children anyways? What are they doing in there? It ain't their bedtime yet. We heard a bottle crash outside. We didn't know what condition you'd be in. Hey, hey, old Tad, you been a good boy? A real good boy? Where'd you get them clothes? Mr. Wishbone got them. What's he talking about? 
Children need those clothes, Fred. School's gonna start soon. Mine! Yeah, it's yours. Who'd you say brought it? Mr. Wishbone. Who's Mr. Wishbone? He's nice. Answer me, who is this Wishbone? You're frightening him, Fred. Stay out of this! Answer me! He stayed with us when Mom was sick. He's funny. Who is he? He is a kind, decent man who saw Billy steal some flour one day and followed him home. And just stayed on, is that it? Yes, he stayed on. He got a doctor for me and he cleaned this house because I couldn't. He bathed the children and he made food for us and he told them stories. He told them jokes and he made them laugh for a change. All the things a father ought to do that you have never, never done. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna kill him! You know a man called Wishbone? Sure. He used to cook for favors out there. What do you mean he used to cook for him? Well, he ain't going on the drive. Leastwise, that's what the sign says. What sign? They're in a hotel. It says starting tomorrow morning he's going to cook for the hotel dining room. in this town, I'm just gonna beat you to within an inch of your life. Fred, stop it! Fred, uh, stop it! You're killing him! Away from me! Let go. Let go or I'll shoot! Go ahead and shoot! I seen. She shot him. Just like that, she shot him. No. What are you doing? I'm telling you, she didn't shoot anybody. She wasn't even here. Now you got that? Yeah, I got it. All right, you remember it. Because if you forget, you're in bad trouble. I won't forget, honest. All right. Now you get out of here and get him a doctor. Quick! No, come on. That's better. 
Oh, wish I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to I know, do it. I know. But what if he dies? He won't die. Yes, but what if he does? Quiet. You want those kids in there to hear you? Well, they've got to know sometimes. No, they don't. Not if you use the good sense the Lord give you. What do you mean? You didn't shoot your husband. What? You weren't even there. Now, he'd been drinking. Everybody in Silver Creek knows what he's like when he's drinking. He come after me, and I had to shoot him in self-defense. Oh, I wish you never should have gotten mixed up It wasn't with us. any of your doing. Yes, it was, my no, doing. No, quiet. You want those kids to grow up knowing that you shot their pa. No, but... Well, then no buts about it. It's a simple matter of self-defense. There won't be any trouble getting them to believe it. Will they get a look at this face? Oh, I wish. Come on, get some rest now. And remember, you weren't even out of the house tonight. What's the matter? My bracelet. You had it on tonight? I haven't had it off since you gave it to me. I must have lost it at the hotel. Finders keepers. Now, oh, look, you. I'm not exactly in the mood to argue. Give me that or I'll bust you apart. You touch me, I'll yell so loud I'll bring half a Silver Creek in here. Where's Harmon? He's with the doctor. Is he gonna live? I don't know. Now, what'd you tell the doctor? I told him Fred was beating up on you and, and you shot him. Now, let me go. All right. Just be sure you remember that. I ain't so sure I can. What? Lying about something like this makes me an accessory. I told the doctor what you wanted me to say, but... I ain't so sure I can tell the sheriff. Are you trying to tell me something? I got a conscience, Mr. Wishbone. I lied about something this important. I don't know if I'd ever get a good night's sleep, as long as I stayed in this town. Oh, and in some other town, you could sleep real good, huh? Only need a hundred dollars. hundred dollars? I haven't got twenty-five. You can get it. Where? Mr. Yates? I don't work for him anymore. You can get it. I know you can. And if I don't? I'm just trying to help you. I just want to get out of this town so nobody can make me talk. All right, I'll try. Now, I want to be on that stagecoach tomorrow morning. Well, it's late. He'll be asleep. He can wake up, can he? He's right upstairs in this hotel. Wait here. Who is it? It's me, Wishbone. Devil happened to you? Well, I can't talk now. I gotta have a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars? Wish you already owe a hundred and eighty-seven dollars. Well, yeah, I know that. Uh, it isn't easy for me to ask, but I gotta have it. Now you'll get it back every penny. Now I get a job here, you know. Yeah, I also know it'd take a month of Sundays to pay back that kind of money. What are you doing with all this money anyway? <laughs> Rowdy, please. Wish if I had a hundred dollars, I'd give it to you. But the money I have isn't mine to give. You really need this $100, huh? More than anything I ever needed. I think I might have a way you could get it. How? Just a minute. Yeah, you can just sign this little contract right here. Can't. Why can't you? Well, a lot of reasons. I got a job here now. Well, they're not going to miss what they've never had. You just sign this contract, and I'll advance you $100 on the next drive. I never thought you'd do this to me. I'll be sorry I didn't think of it sooner. <laughs> All right, I'll sign, but I got to add one thing to this contract. Now, what's that? I'll go only if I'm not forcibly detained. Forcibly detained? I don't see why anybody forcibly detain you here in Silver Creek. Here 
they are. Uh, well, I wish it's good having you back with us. What about the money? Oh, yes, I'll get that. One hundred dollars. Now we leave day after tomorrow. I know when we leave. You know, just giving a little more time, you'd turn out even more sneaky than Mr. Favor. <laughs> Nicest thing he ever said to me. There you are. There's only fifty dollars here. That's right. There's somebody else needs fifty dollars more than you do. <laughs> I said a hundred. Fifty dollars is more than enough to get you out of town and leave some left over. Now take it and get out. And don't you dare say one word about Miss Harmon or I'll tear your tongue out by the roots. Understand? I understand. All right, then. Get out of here and stay. Doc says you saw the shooting in here. That's right. Who done it? Let's go, mister. How's Harmon? He's still alive. No thanks to you. You got any kind of an explanation? Only it was self-defense. That's very interesting. On account of Fred Harmon wasn't wearing a gun. You better pray he lives, mister. Because if he don't, you're gonna hang for murder. He could rot in there. What are you getting so hot up about if he didn't do it? Nobody said he didn't do it. All I said was Harmon won't press charges. Now maybe there's just something about this thing that we don't know about. There's a lot you don't know about. Harmon took after Wishbone because your friend's been carrying on with Harmon's wife. I don't believe that. And you're the only one in Silver Creek who don't. It's all over town. Wishbone's not only been seeing her, but he's been buying her jewelry and clothes and... say is I didn't do anything to be ashamed of. Wait here for me a minute. I'll be right back. All right. How come they let him go? Huh? Oh, Harmon didn't want to press charges. Huh. I don't wonder. What'd you say? I was the one that seen it. I seen the whole thing. What'd you see? Well, you made me promise not to tell. <laughs> Hurry up, mister. We're leaving. Uh, hold the stage. Is it worth $50 to you? That's enough. This is all we can spare. He never shot nobody. It was Mrs. Harmon that done it. Huh? Here. She dropped this on the floor. Who is it? Dr. 
Dr. Sturdivant, ma'am. I'll be by tomorrow, Mrs. Harmon. But all you can do for him is make him comfortable. No sudden movements, of course. I didn't expect you. No way you could have known. The doctor thought I'd get better care at home. I didn't have the strength to argue with him. Fred, it... It ain't gonna heal you none, but I'm sorry. I thought I'd killed you. How'd you feel? Like someone lifted a headstone off of my back. I'd like to get back to the beginning, Liz. Remember the river? I'd like to take an axe and cut right through the debris and get back there. Back to the first days. The first child. Too much has happened. The boat office. You found another man. Yes, I found another man. I didn't look for him. But I found him. I didn't know how you felt about him, but I told the sheriff the shooting was an accident. He's an old man, Liz. Is that better than what we had at the beginning? Now, listen. You can stay here. I will take care of you as long as you're sick. And after that, you're free to leave for good if that's what you want. I appreciate that. But this is my home, Liz. I put it up plank by plank. I put sod against the walls, filled in the cracks with mud. Made a warm place for us. The first summer, I cut a window in the bedroom, screened it off against the fly so the children could sleep cool. I dug a well. I put up a shelter to hang venison. I made troughs to carry off the rain. Sure, I've been away most of the time. But this is my home, Liz. When I get well, I'm going to run outside and get me a stick and write my name in the ground. Do you want to leave? I was worried about you. Sorry. Thought you'd still be with the doctor. Well, that's being honest anyways. She was very upset. I wanted to see how she was. You're in another man's home, Mr. Wishbone. If you want to talk to Mrs. Harmon, you go ahead and talk. I ain't in any position to leave a room. It's all right, Wish. Thank you. I married Mr. Harmon on September 2nd, 1862, in Sensibo, Ohio, on the banks of the river. I've been married to him these 10 years, and I gave him three children. And whatever he wants is up to him. married to him, and I always will be. Let's 
it's only right. Say something to the kids for me. Here, now, what's going on? Who said to start without me? No one's starting without you. We're just checking the supplies, that's all. Now, I signed on, didn't I? That means I'm in charge of the supplies. Here, why should put these things away for me? Who's got my checklist? Grace, give that checklist. Now, before we go any further with any of the checking, we open up some of these things and find out what they've given us. Half of the time, I get rotten supplies. Now, will you just stand and stop moving around and leave things alone the way you check? Supplies is just ridiculous. You can't check everything at once. You've got to check one thing at a time. First the flour, then the beans, then the fruit, then the bacon. Prince, will you stop pushing things off to him and carrying some of the stuff yourself? Yeah, All right, go ahead. Yeah, first, we'll take the beans. That's fine. Now, you've got beans there or flour? That's beans. Put it in the wagon. Is there a nice, uh, heavy tan leather under those beans you're putting in there? a job name's favor i need four hands to fill out a crew for sedalia sedalia you got the wrong party mister i've been to sedalia seven dollars a week and all the grub you can eat man says they're offering ten over on the chip the man's a liar but if you want promises i'll throw in a bottle of kentucky liquor every thursday and three blondes fan your brow when you ride drag is that a fact you want brunettes couldn't make a redhead 
He'll make it pink and white pendos if he has to. <laughs> now, who's your cook? G.W. Wishbone. Cranky little cuss about so high. That is him. Get out the pen and ink. Uh, is this Doe Wrangler do his business? Friend, I understand he cooks biscuits even you could chew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you heel sweating cow nurses. You heard the man said wants a crew for Sedalia. How many do you need? Four. Man wants four good men. That's me and one extra. What church? Now you just relax. I'll work the whole thing out. Come on, come on, come on. What do I do, shy in a fed bed? A real takeover type, ain't he? Believe me, he's doing fine. I'll say, as soon as he picks up a few more, feed him a couple drinks and bring him over to Reed's Ranch. Where are you going? See you, man. Mr. Parker. Mr. Hubbard. Look like a stampede hit. What happened? Oh, boys are a little restless in town. They'll settle down once they back to work. Uh, get your crew filled? Close enough, except my scout ain't show up yet, but he'll probably come next soon. I have to be ready in three forties. Yeah. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Well, I couldn't cut it much closer than that, unless you want us to brand all night. Mr. Favor, we... Come over to the Cabins Association with me. We're having a meeting. All the owners. We need you in on it. did he tell you? Not a thing. I figured you had the big mouth. You might as well do the talking. So it's me. You can drop pay for the three days you're lining up a crew, Mr. Faber. You're being replaced. Replaced? Why? There's nothing to do with your work. I know your reputation. It's a good one. You can bet your last nickel it's a good one. Because he gets the job done. Ask Kriegel. Ask Blunt. George, part of that last herd was yours. Any complaints? He got my beeves through. He got my price. I say stick with him again. That's what you say. Huh? Well, I don't. I want a tougher man. I want a man who can get the job done faster than Mr. Faber. Jubal, listen. You want to split the herd? Your 1600 couldn't go it alone any better than my 500. Sit down, Jubal. Mr. Faber. I got 400 head of steers I got to get to market. I can't afford to do it on my own. I'll wait a minute. It's all right, Mr. Parker. 1,600 head is a pretty convincing argument. Good day to you, gentlemen. Just a favor. That drive's going to need all the experience it can get. I'm asking you to go along anyway. At the same salary. If I have to pay it out of my own pocket. Just go along. That's what? Ramlet? No, thanks. Oh, by the way, who is the new trail boss? You're looking at him. Luck. Three men over here all signed up. Wait. You know, that church got more lip than any movie cow I've ever seen. Somebody told him we didn't have a scout. So he says to me, he says, he says, don't worry about the scout. He says, I'll take care of it. Imagine, you know, he's never even been on the Sedalia Trail in his life. I said to him, I says, church, look, being as you've got all this talent, why don't you just take over being trail boss? Yeah, you know, he says to me, good idea. So then I said, well, don't you? Mm -hmm. Did you ever slow down? Well, I thought you'd be interested in what happened. You thought wrong. I guess I did. The bad luck. Mm. No, wait a minute. I know how you feel, and I think you deserve an explanation when it happened. Look, you don't mean explanation. It happened. Yeah. Listen. How old would you say I am, Mr. Faber? Couldn't guess. I make a guess. 
Hmm. Your 40s? 40s. As a favor, I'll be 51 in March. Well, congratulations. Were you in the war? Look, Mr. Wade. They said I was too old. I was 40 when that war started. I was the best trail boss in the Southwest, and I mean that. I'd just gotten married, and my wife was 17. She wanted me to stay, but I signed on with a blockade runner, and they took us off Mobile, September 62. And they sent us to Camp Douglas, that's just outside of Chicago. Ever hear of the place? Yeah. When I come out of there, I weighed 93 pounds. Consumption. They hurried my papers through so they wouldn't bring me there. Sorry. No. My wife thought I was dead, and I didn't let her know any different. I scared up a couple of dollars, and I went to Arizona, and bought some cows, and I, well, I hit it lucky. At the end of five years, I got my lungs cleared up, and I had a herd to boot. And that's when I come home. This. It's my wife, Charity. See? Eh? Mm. She's 27 now, prettier than when I left. And I got it all back. Wife, health, money. It's the same as it was. Is it? <laughs> you got a real good ear, Mr. Favor. You hear it sticking in my craw, don't you, that I'm 50 instead of 40. When I left, the herd's just going north. I'm going with them this time. It's like closing the circle, Mr. Favor. I have to go. You understand that? I see you don't mind killing yourself to make a point. The point is, I won't kill myself. You're making this point, too. Me? You away. Who else? Well, that's it. I just wanted you to know that uh, there was nothing personal in what I did. Nothing against you, no. As a matter of fact, I want a second on Parker. I'd be proud if you'd come with me on the drive. Oh, thanks. I'll find something else. Where? Season's on. What about your end? Well, they'll be going with you. They are if you're along to handle them. Look, well, these are some of the best hands in the business. Maybe, maybe not. I just soon pick a crew of my own ranch. Well, men you know, I know. I promised these men work. They're, they've given up good jobs. Some of them even have families. I said I'd keep them if you're the ramrod. Now I hope you change your mind. I'll hold the position open until noon tomorrow. Think it over. Hi, boss. What? Pete! Hey! Just noticed you were resting here in the hotel, I thought. Yeah. Hey, well, how are you? Fine. Just passing through. Passing through, huh? Oh, where? I'm going to California. California? Well. Oh, uh, how's old Wishbone? Oh, fine. Fine. Rowdy? Just fine. Just fine. Mushy. Yeah, well, he's fine, too. Sure, every, everybody's fine. Okay. Uh, I guess you've hired yourself a scout by now. No, as a, as a matter of fact, I haven't. Uh, still shopping around. I don't get the wrong idea. I'm, I'm not looking for a job. Oh, no, 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 Pete. No, no. Uh, did you bring my horse and saddle back on the trail? Sure, got all your gear. Pick it up any time you want. Yes, I am, too. Am? What? I'm looking for a job. Help me finish. I've been here in San Antonio three days, trying to make up my mind whether to come here and tell you, but I'm sorry about that fight. Oh, no, that was just as much my fault as it was yours. No, I wasn't, but... Well, it's no scar. Start it again. No, that's a good idea. Uh, anyhow, I'm flat broke. I'm ready to go back to work. You're broke? I'm worse than that. I gotta have $100 by tomorrow night. Uh -huh. A hundred dollars? What happened? The fellow built an inside straight. You got nicked in a poker game? I thought you were smarter than that. You got something to do to pass the time. Look, I had two bullets and a king kicker. And I picked up another ace. I figured I had him. Oh, well, you don't need the money right away, do you? I mean, you could hold this guy off, couldn't you?
They've been following me all day. Look, I wouldn't ask you for this, but I know I'll pay you back before we get sedated. All you gotta do is dock me until we're clear. Yeah. Yeah, well, sure, sure, all right. Eat, uh, I'll get an advance from the owners first thing in the morning. Thanks, boss. It's good to be back. Hey, it's good to have you back. A drink? Yeah, drink. <laughs> Glad to get out of these things, I'll tell you. why you have to burn them all again, Jubal. Well, I told you, it's the law. You gotta have an old brand. With every steer in the drive is marked the same. Oh, I thought you'd be pleased. Well, think how it hurts. Oh, now, it don't hurt. Steer is high, it ain't like your skin, Cherry. Lucky mine's softer. You'd be wanting to brand me, too. Well, might be a way to prove ownership. Go ahead, Aaron. All right, let's start branding. What's going on out there? Putting the road brand on, ain't he? The road brand without bosses say so? What are you two doing? Well, I'm gonna put the trail brand Who on. made that the brand? Mr. Way. Whether you know it or not, but the trail boss makes up the trail brand, not the owner. Now put that back in there. Dead for something? Put it back. Friend, maybe you'd like to wear this across your face. You just try that. Oh, no! Stay here. Get up, 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 get no one burns until the trail boss says so. The trail boss did say so. You're a liar. Buddy! Oh, am I going to see you? What's going on? Tell these people who the trail boss is, we. That'd be Mr. Wade. Are you joking? Is that job still open? Still open. You've got yourself a ramrod. Ram? Come on, right over to the house. No, it's nothing. Well, come on. Come on. Mr. Favor, I want to thank you on behalf of, of all the... Mr. Parker, I'll need an advance of $100. Of course. Boss. I see what's going on here. I don't need the money that bit. Next time man draws one card and stays two rounds, please fold. I see what you mean. Thanks. Church, right over and tell Roger I want to see him. Right, boss.
This will take some of the sting out of it. Open your shirt. What's that? Just butter. Open your shirt. Oh, no, it really doesn't hurt, uh, ma'am. <laughs> I don't believe I've seen you around here before, Mr. Uh, Yates, uh, Rowdy Yates. No, I don't generally spend much time around San Antonio. I imagine he gets lonely driving the herd north. Well, it's not really too bad. I suppose when you boy hits the Dahlia, you really cut loose. A little. <laughs> I don't blame you. It's just about the only chance you get to relax, isn't it? When drives ended and just before it starts. We're having a fandango here tonight. Yeah, I heard about that. My husband hates them. Get out of breath when he dances. Do you dance, Mr. Yates? Well, I've been known to try a little. Roddy, you in? I didn't mean to. What are you doing here? I'm in favor wants to see you. I'll get you a bandage. Mm -hmm. Boy, what do you got I ain't got? Except for a burnt hide. Hmm. Probably pretty easy to get burnt on here. You mean you don't go for them lonely little gals? I ain't so sure she's lonely. She might be a little sick. And just call in old Doc Chert. Take over everything, don't you? I haven't found a job yet I couldn't handle. All right. You take this one over. Mr. Favor. What do you mean? Yeah. That's everybody. You know, Quince? Yeah, boss. That's just it. I'm not your boss anymore. There's a new drive, and it's got a new trail boss. And the sooner you get it through your head, the easier it's going to be on everybody. Mr. Wade's a good man. He was pushing beef when most of us were playing with mud pies. He's smart. He knows the business. And he's carrying about 10 years too many. How many years too many are you carrying, Wish? Oh, well, it's different with me. I keep in shape. I'm not going to argue with any of you. I told you how it stacks up. That's it. Mr. Wade is boss. I'm Ramrod. Well, what's that make me? A drover. A regular drover. I suppose I don't like that, though. You can quit. Any more questions? All right, let's get out there and help with Brandon. All right, boss. All right. I figure we can make more than five miles a day at first, at least until we cross Mud River. There's no need for you to range farther than two days out. Twenty miles at the outside, right? In favor, I'm putting you in favor. Yes, sir. I'm putting you at point. You can pick your own drag and flank now. Yes, Mr. Wade. Incidentally, favor. Your men know who's boss in this drive? They know. Good. I guess that does it. We'll head them at sunrise. Well, I think I'll get some shut eye. It's a good idea. This wing ding's going on long enough. Anybody see my wife? Oh, she was dancing with a church a minute ago. She's crazy about dancing. 
What a night, what a night, what a night. Sir, did you ever play King of the Hill when you were a kid? Yeah, sure. See? That's the way I feel right now. King of the Hill. No, better. King of the world. Like I was 20 feet tall. Well, I better see if I can find Mrs. Wade. Here she comes now, Mr. Wade. Oh. Jubal, you're going to stay out here all night? It's after 11, and half your guests have left. Fine, let's see the other half after them. Hair's all loose. Where's that pretty comb you were wearing? Where was it gone? Must have dropped it while I was dancing. You can buy me another one in Sedalia. I'll buy you a hundred. Night, boys. Mr. Wade, ma'am. Good night. Good luck on the drive. King of the Hill. King of nothing. yell goodbye, but she's far away. She couldn't hear. Oh, I guess she couldn't. Nah. Got nothing to do. Rowdy, if you want advice, who'd you go to? What kind of advice? Person. I suppose I'd try Mr. Favor. Yeah, that's what I figured. You don't think we can make it? Well, a bog's a bog. We might begin again, we might not. All right, we'll send them west. To the flanks. Well, should not tell the trail boss first. Ain't time. Keep moving. Come to see you. We're moving off the trail. 
No, it's all right. It's not all right. Hold him! What did he say? He said to hold him. Mr. Favor told us... Vince? Just remember, Mr. Favor, given the orders anymore. Yeah, I guess you're right. What the devil's the matter with you? What do you think I put that point for? Mr. Wade, there's bog up ahead. Bog? What bog? There's no bog in the trail, man. Well, there's an underground stream through here, and sometimes it'll make it like walking on quicksand. Favor, I don't intend to go around obstacles. I intend to go straight through them. I don't mind losing a few head, but I do mind losing time. A week keep going, most of the herd will get across, bog or no bog. It will have saved two or three days that you would have taken going around. Mr. Wade, I'm not talking about a couple of head. I'm talking about half the herd. Who are you giving orders to? Sorry, Mr. Wade, I didn't realize I was giving orders. Nolan! What's this about a bog? Just over there. And we're right in front of it. We can bust through it instead of going around. Why don't you shut your butts through your mouth, huh? Look, I think I got a right to what I think. You ain't paid for thinking. Shut up, both of you. What about it, Nolan? There's a bog over there. I told Mr. Favor about it. Well, why didn't you tell me? I guess I should have. You guess. I know. You don't know. Well, let me tell you something. I went over every for that trail with three cowpokes who come down it not two months ago. And nobody said anything about a bog. Maybe it was dry two months ago. Well, is it dry now? It looks pretty marshy. Wait a minute. I'm asking you, can you tell me if the herd can get through or if the herd can't get through? It might. And then it might not. Miss Wade. Look, when I want to hear from you, I'll ask you. Anybody else got a contribution? All right, then get those beams back on the trail. Get them there. Favor. I know this ain't much of a time to bother you. Then don't. Just do what the man says. Get him moving. Say it. Mr. Wade, it's really bad up ahead. There must be 30 steers bogged down, stuck in mud up to their neck. It's, it's gonna take a week to pull them out. Shoot them. All of them? All of them. Yes, sir. Mr. Wade says to shoot the ones that are bogged in bad. What, with dynamite? They're up to their necks. Now, what do you think of your trade loss? He made a mistake. You could have made it, so could I. And you could have made it. I wouldn't have made it. Neither would Mr. Favor. Well, uh, it's just this one rotten little strip of quicksand mud. It's one rotten strip of bog, that's what it is. We're working, ain't we? Ain't this better than sitting back in San Antonio, sitting around waiting? You like working here in the mud, honey? I don't like it, as long as they're paying. Let's try some of it. Boy. All right, that's enough! Get out there. You got a job to do, Roddy. Shoot him. Quince? Yes, sir. You'd better go with Roddy and help him. 
Take church with you. Church ain't here, boss. Where is he? Well, he lit out. Said he's quitting going back to San Antonio. What for? Don't know. All right, go ahead. Kent, you go with him. Oh. I'm not hungry. Man has to eat, boss. Mail. Mail from Chuck, gentlemen. Big stack for you, Mr. Favor. Hey, plenty for everybody. Favor. 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 Ramrod. I'll pass them out. Uh, these on top are for me, all right. If I take them, boss? Take them. Gates. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Wentz. Solid. You know, if I was the first man on the moon, there'd Bunchy. be a bill waiting there for me. Nolan. It's my Wishbone. Dad, from Parker. Oh, yeah? Webb Church went back to town. Teddy. And he and Mrs. Wade are running off together back east. Church and Mrs. Wade? Which? Well, I should have guessed it. And Parker wants uh, me to break the news to Wade. And then comes the king of the hill. Scarlet? Yeah. Wishbone? Is that all of them? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Wade. Charity's a funny one. She always keeps adding to her letters. I'll probably get one side of the bedroll along about Red River Station. Yeah, probably you will. What do you go, man, to shirt or something? I want to talk to Mr. Fay. You heard me. Be sure and be real gentle with him like he was to you. Well, what was that all about? You're not going to give him that. Look, if you can start passing on advice, I don't need it. Well, whether you need it or not, I'm going to give it to you. Oh, we've been through a lot together. When you've been right, I told you, and when you've been wrong, I told you that, too. Well, you're wrong about that. A man's got a right to know if his wife runs off with another man. Look, Parker is his friend. Now, why would Parker have told me to tell him if, if he didn't have a good reason for it? If it breaks up the drive, it breaks it up. It's the way the man wants it done. You get that weight and you cause nothing but trouble. If that's true, well, it's done, finished. But if that's nothing but gossip, you set Wade off for no reason at all. Or is that what you want? I'll break it to him easy. Oh, sure, like you did about the bog. Now, you heard what happened. Wouldn't listen. Well, you can't have two trail bosses on a drive. Half of them listening to him and half of them to you. What Wade needs help. If he don't get this drive's finished, the only thing the owners will remember is that Gil Favor was along and it's Gil Favor's fault. And if we get there to Sedalia, what will the owners remember? Well, just that Gil Favor isn't too bad a ramrod. Hey, Favor. I know one of those letters you got was from Parker. Any, uh, any news from home? Oh, nothing. Nothing important.
excited, kettle-bellied scrubs? Gage? Yeah? How are they? As jumpy as a tree full of loaded dice. Yeah. I don't like that hollering. One dash from that critter and we'd have a stampede in our hands. Mr. Favorite handle it. Mean and I couldn't? Meaning nothing. You got a big mouth for a young pup, you know that? Yeah, that's a matter of opinion. Mr. Favorite teach you disrespect along with everything else? Look, don't crowd me, Mr. Wade. I'll crowd you, you miserable young punk. What do you think you're on, some kind of a picnic? I'll crowd you, I'll crowd you. Clear back to San Antonio. You'll out here and try to spook me. Spook you? Draw your pay, H, you're through. Oh, you're a real big man, Mr. Wade, especially with your wife, huh? What was that? I saw the letter. What letter? You know, the letter Mr. Favors you. Yeah. He didn't show me any letter. He got one from Parker. What did the letter say? Look, I'm out of line, Mr. Wade. So what did he on. say? A man named Church ran off the wife, that's what he said. Ten minutes ago. Where's Mr. Wade? He's just gonna check the herd. Well, I gotta talk to him. Oh, what's wrong? Another bog? Oh, this could be worse. What is it? Comanches. Comanches! Where? About two days north of here. I think they're heading to the mountains. We just stay here and be quiet. They might miss us. Can't stay without grass. What about west of here? Well, there's some reason. Water holes? Well, there's a couple, but I wouldn't guarantee them to be wet this time of year. I'd better get away. Favor? How come you ain't in guard? I had the Scarlet take over on me. You seen Mr. Wade? Well, uh... What? Oh, uh, you just seen him? You ain't. Well, I slept and I told him about his wife. You what? Why? Because I thought you'd told him already, that's why. What is all this? Come on. Mr. Wade, where are you going? Where do you think I'm going? Mr. Wade, that, that might all be a mistake. Besides, it's more important. We've got a problem, Mr. Wade. I ran across a party of Comanches up north here. If we stick to the west, I figure we're gonna run short of water, but we can't stay here without grass. I'll keep north. Comanches play rough. You've got guns. Keep north. Pete, how many in the party? 50, 60 Braves. How far off is the water? It's too far to turn back if we're wrong. Oh, I risk it. We all heard him give the order. He wasn't in any shape to know what he was saying. We might have a better chance at the water hole. We know the Comanches are going to attack. If they do, we lose half the herd. That's not our problem. That's Wade's. He gave the order. Mr. Wade isn't here. Mr. Favor's in charge. If we go against Mr. Wade's orders and go out there and get caught without water, you know who's going to get the blame. And if we make it, he gets the credit. So either way, we're taking the risk to save his reputation. Can't take a chance on 60 Comanches. We'll try for water. The boss. I said we'll try for water. Rowdy, you'll head him out at dawn. I'll head him out. Where are you going? Going after Wade. What for? Help him find his wife if that's what he wants. If that's his bed, let him lie in it. Church tried to talk to me. I cut him short. Quit trailing me. I don't need you. You might. Sometimes I can't figure you out at all. Me either, sometimes. We'll pick up new mounts here and see if we can face them past San Antonio. Howdy, Mr. Wade. Earn, take care of the horses and saddle up some fresh ones. Well, uh... Well, what? She's back, Mr. Wade. When? This morning. Just her alone? No, sir. Both of them. 
they're inside. Mr. Wayne, look, they're back, that's something. Why don't you hear them out? Wait, he ain't got a gun. Give me yours. I won't take it. You look sneak. I made him bring me back. I couldn't leave you two. Couldn't you, Cherry? You understand? Yeah. I expect you wonder what came over me when you heard that. Let's go inside. It's getting late. I'll send your clothes on to San Antonio Hotel. Ernie will drive you in. You don't want to stay out after dark. Hotel. The stage leaves around noon, I think. Used to, anyway. Jubal, I haven't got a penny. Hitch up the rig, Ern. Yes, sir. I'm going back to the herd. If you're still here by the time I get my horse saddled, I'll cut your throat. Webb, you'll take me with you? I was the one made you come back, remember? Tough ride back to San Antonio. It shouldn't be half so tough as the ride back this morning. Why'd the good Lord ever give a man a conscience anyway? Beat me. You know the old boy packs a pretty tough wallop. They're smart. You sure made him look good in front of his men. I'd say I was pretty brainless, Mr. Favor. At times. There's only one more water hole marked on this map. Over the hill and dead ahead. What if it's as dry as the last two? Let's find out. It looks like we're still in business. Don't you ever get tired of always being right, Favor? It's a big difference between being right and being lucky. We had a lot of both on this move. We ran into an army patrol. They lost 10 men to fight with the Comanches. We'd have been right in the middle of it. My thanks, Mr. Favor. You'd have done the same thing if you'd had a minute to think. Once, maybe. 
Oh, I don't know. Well, I think I'll go home. I heard all right. That's what I wanted to make sure of. You take over for me? Sure. You're a miserable ramrod. Not a bad trail boss. Adios. Breakfast is ready, my lord. Uh, good morning, my lord. Oh, good morning, Wolsey. How's the weather? Excellent, my lord. Is Fawny Joe saddle the horses? He's uh, still asleep, my lord. Oh, no stamina. No stamina at all. Oh, I dare say I did give him a rough time of it yesterday. But if there is such a beast as the white buffalo, I've got to bag him. An albino, I think they call it, my lord. Can you picture that bison's head in the trophy room at Brookfield? Oh, definitely, sir. Between the royal Bengal tiger and that, uh, that African tusker. Remember him, Woolsey? One shot and the blighter charging all the way. I shall never forget it, my lord. Uh, what, uh, what is this? A prairie chicken's egg, sir. Uh, quite similar to the English grouse, I believe. Oh. Excellent. Thank you, my lord. You know, Woolsey, you have a way of making me forget how far we are from Brookfield. Indeed, I'd be quite lost without you. Mm, oh, no, sir. It's the other way around. Ever since the first Lord Ashton set foot in Brookfield Manor, there's been a Woolsey there to serve. Perhaps you miss England more than I. Oh, no, sir. Um, what I'm trying to say, sir, uh, wherever we journey, it's your lordship's presence uh, that makes it home. Nicely put, Woolsey. Nicely put indeed. Well, that sounds like thunder. Where's he off to? I'm see. Where are my boots, Woolsey? Uh, here, my lord. No, never mind, Woolsey. Get my glasses and hurry. What Pony Joe find? What a magnificent sight! Look at him, Woolsey. The monarch of the plains, the great North American bison. What? Perhaps you'll find the albino. Sounds like shooting. Buffalo hunters. They make big kill. So will we. Saddle up the horses like a good fowl. Better we hunt later. You heard his lordship. Better later. I've waited too long for this moment as it is. We got 
of trouble now. You and your fancy dude had better start backtracking. If you're referring to me, my good man, I'm Lord Ashton. And I happen to know exactly where I'm going if you and your friends will be so kind as to get out of my way. Mighty highfalutin, ain't he? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I happen to be Mr. Bison Bob Driscoll. When it comes to giving orders, you better ask your guide whose word goes around here. Am I to understand you're forbidding me to hunt? If we speak the same lingo. You're one of those hide men, aren't you? Then you've heard of me. Oh, yes, I've heard how you slaughtered those noble creatures by the hundreds and left their carcasses to rot. Hides and tongues, all they're good for. Not to a hunter, Mr. Driscoll, or to a sportsman, just to a butcher. Look, mister, that hurts our grub steak. You or nobody else is gonna ride out and split them, or stampede them just for sport. We go back now, you listen to Joe. He can tell you how risky it is hunting buffalo. Man can get himself trampled, or gored, or even by accident, stop a bullet. Have you got anything else to say? No, just think it over. Mr. Lordship, that Driscoll, he mean what he say. Well, so do I. I came a long way for that trophy. You stubborn man, Mr. Lordship. Especially when my dander's up. Now, I'll take my gun, please. Here, but Pony Joe, he got no dander. You found the buffalo. Your service is no longer needed. Brave man, Mr. Lordship. Or a bloody fool. Buffalo, right inside that ridge of black one. Buffalo? Yeah, and that's not the half of it. There's a big hunt going on over there. They got hides staked out from one end of the valley to the other. I bet it's the same outfit poisoned the water over at Sulphur Springs. Uh, I've been itching to get my hands on them. We ought to run them clear off the prairie this time. It makes you so sure it's the same outfit. They're all alike, boss. They'd do anything to make the kill. Use dynamite if it didn't spoil the hides. That's right. That poisoned water sure cost us plenty of beeves. And two of our best cutting horses in your favor. We're gonna have to tangle with them sooner or later. War ain't gonna settle anything. Running away ain't either. Look, we got a herd to move first. Next, we got a ridge to move them across. Let's take our troubles one at a time. All right, let's get moving. Wishbone, pack it in on the double. Go on, Marcy, pack it up. When, oh, when is it ever gonna be downhill and shady? Mister, I think you ought to come down here and take a look. This fellow laying down in the ravine looks like he's hurt pretty bad. Wince, get a hold of Wishbone. Go 
going to move you, mister. Lord Ashton. Oh, I'm Gil Favor. A gentleman, sir. A true gentleman. Easy now. All right, Chris, take it up and tie it off. That's enough. All right, she's ready. All right, Pete. Take her down in. Take it off slow. Easy now. Steady. All the way easy. Something about the size of a buffalo gun, I'd say. Oh, your lordship. Lordship? What happened, my lord? I saw your horse, but the, the guide was gone, and I had no way to find you. We'd just come across him down there. He's been shot bad. Oh, your lordship. Don't worry, Woolsey. These men are chivalrous. That's Mr. Faber. He's an honorable gentleman. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Favor, we're far from our native shores. I know, Lord Ashton. Woolsey will be lost here alone. He'll need someone to take care of him. I promise we'll look after him. He'll serve you well. He's the most faithful man I've ever known. I entrust him to your care. Mr. Favor, it's just uh, Woolsey, sir. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to make such a display of myself, sir. But after so many years with his lordship, to find him murdered like this, a bullet in the back. Unless you've got some proof for that out here, it'll just have to be written off as an accident. He just happened into somebody's range. Oh, I doubt it, sir. Well, the next town we... Reach is sharp. She'll be able to talk to the sheriff about it there. And there'll be an eastbound stage for you then. But I, I don't think I quite understand, sir. I promised him I'd take care of you. Oh, I know, sir. And I'll take care of you, Mr. Favor. Just as faithfully as I did his lordship. Oh, oh look, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a trail boss and, and having a valet on a cattle drive. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, you don't know us, Woolsey, sir. You'll find that we're irreplaceable. In many generations of service, sir, no Woolsey has ever got the sack. Wait a minute. Maybe I didn't make myself plain. I think perhaps neither of us did, sir. But Lord Ashton's word is good enough for me. A gentleman like you, Mr. Favor, deserves a gentleman's gentleman. <laughs> What knothead shooting this close to camp? Are you loco? You could have had those beans jumping clean out of their hides. Dear me, I am sorry. I, I was only trying to, uh, to fatten the larder. Uh, oh. Well, so long as you got him, I can use him in the son of a gun. What was that, old boy? The stew, stew. Stew? Oh, how perfectly dreadful. Uh, no, I'm preparing these uh, a la marguerite. Marguerite? <laughs> Look, mister, there's just one cook in this outfit. 
Well, of course, Mr. Wishbone. Uh, the sage hen Marguerite is for master favor. Oh, so that's it. Well, you just don't know the boss, mister. Whether you know it or not, you're going back where you come from. Uh, suppose we let him decide that. <laughs> Good around here. Yeah, sure does. Ain't that? What is this? Uh, sage hen, sir, a la Marguerite. If you'll uh, sit down, sir, I'll serve you your dinner. You'll do what? Why, what's the matter, sir? Uh, sage hen doesn't disagree with you, I hope, sir. Woolsey, in this outfit, the boss eats with the men. Oh, sir, uh, that would be like his lordship eating backstairs. All right, come and get it, John. Recital stiffs, it's all there is. Look, Woolsey, things just ain't the same in this country, especially in a cow camp. But I, I'll try to learn your custom, sir. All right, you can start out by dishing that whatever you call it to everyone. Everyone, sir. Even, even cook. Yeah, even, even cook. Mighty fine fixings, Woolsey. Yeah, you bet. Sure does beat stew. I got my grub. You ought to try it, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, I ought to. That kind of stuff gives me the epizootic. Epizootic? Horse colic. Horse colic, indeed. Once and for all. But I, I put up the tent uh, so that you would have privacy, sir. I don't see what's wrong with a hot tub. Nothing. But if you went to all the trouble of fixing it, well, why don't you take it? Me, sir? I'd sooner drown first. What are you doing? Dumping it, sir. You're wasting all that hot water? That's downright criminal. Well, in that case, sir, won't you reconsider... Hey, which one? Where's the boss? With his nibs. You must have slept with a burr in your blanket. Hey, hey boy. Well, I'll be a blue nose mute. Well, what do you want? Ain't you never seen a man take a bath before? Look, whatever you want, it can wait until I get out. Now, if you want to be charged a day's pay for the peep show, all right. Oh, that's what I call buttering up the boss for a fair. I've, I've done it again, sir, haven't I? No, not you, me. You don't know any better, but I should. Trail boss's job isn't that much different from a wrangler or a drover or a pot washer, and he can't be that much different. Very well, sir. 
If to please you, I have to please everyone else, I will. All I want is for you to stop all this. But I must be of some use. Oh, yes. <laughs> Aren't you at noon camp? Because I come to tell you that if all that kind of fancy cooking's what you like, I'm quitting. Now, hold on. Well, I don't bow and scrape and kowtow to anybody. Well, who says you do? Oh, I've been watching you, the way he's been spreading the mustard, and you taking it all in. Well, he's only got one day left. Have you told his nibs that? Now, don't worry, you go on ahead. We're going to circle up this side of the Roan River Ford. He'll show you where to camp. I told you I'm quitting. And who's telling who around here? All right, but it's going to be him or me. How many dogs did he have? Hounds, Mr. Pete. His lordship had a fine pack of over 50 or more. All to chase one small fox? Oh, but it's the thrill of the chase, the go at the jumps, the yikes, tally ho! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fay, would you ever ride to the hounds? Nope. But you saddle stiffs better ride to herd. We're running a trail outfit here, not a hunt club. Ooh, uh, did I pull another bloomer, sir? Uh, I was only trying to be a good fellow, uh, like you suggested, sir. Look, Woolsey, don't you have a, have a wife or, or a family back in England? Uh, no, sir. A girlfriend, maybe. Uh, well, you see, sir, when one devotes one's life to being a gentleman's gentleman, uh, one hasn't much time for one's own affairs. And then with his lordship's love of adventure and travel... But look, your home is England. That's where you belong. Yes, but... Uh, look, <laughs> we'll be held up here for a while, Fort in the Rhone. Now, the town of Sharps is only ten miles from here. Oh, please, Master Faber, I'll catch on. You'll see. We'll see. Why don't you go home? <laughs> Buffalo gun just the other side of that ridge. We're gonna have trouble holding them, Mr. Faber. So get back to them. I'll go across and see what I can do. Don't you want me to go with you? I don't want everybody else to stay here, you understand? You won't have to go far, boss. I'm Skinner's. I can smell them from here. Who's the boss of this outfit? I am. Name's Faber. So I figured. Bison Bob Driscoll. Ah, oh, I've heard of you. Most people have. You planning on crossing? You'd hold up on that fire in a bit. Uh, you're making our herd a little hard to handle. One of them cattle coming through is liable to spook them buffalo clear away from here. Floor we're ready. How long do you want us to wait? Tomorrow. As soon as we can collect our hides. We're planning to fire the grass here at the riverbank. Clear across to them red rocks. You're starting a range fire? The wind will take it west. We'll move them buffalo along just as neat as if they were a trail herd. The last range fire they had blacked half the territory before it burned itself out. Some hunters got a little careless. Like maybe the wind changed and they couldn't stop it. Is that what you mean? You don't own this range exclusive, Driscoll. Nope. It's wide open. And anybody with the guts to take is welcome. Only they better have guns to do it with. They're really asking for it, boss. They sure are. What do you want to do? The only other crossing I know of is at Bentley, and it'll take us three weeks to get to it. We'll check with the other men. They'll have to be in on the deciding. Well, you know how the other men feel about it. We'll see. I ain't afraid of them, boss. I say we ought to push through now before they start burning. If we don't, there won't be any grass for the beef. Remember that fire two years ago? The wind shifted and burned down half Texas. See, nobody could stop it. That might be the answer. You don't think they give a hoot? No, but the people of Sharps might. Now, shifting that wind in their whole town would go up in smoke. That bunch of pie faces wouldn't have the grit to stand up and be counted. Then we've got to convince them. Except they don't like drovers any better than buffalo hunters. Look, we haven't got any choice. Now, if we went in there with enough men, if they didn't think that we were alone... Hey, it's all right by me. I am willing. All right, let's go. Hey, wait a minute. You're going into town. You've got to look respectable. There's a lot of water down at the stream. wolves has got a tub. I want you all smelling real pretty. That's enough. 
Now remember, all we want to do is to stampede them cars away from the crossing and keep your guns where they belong. Don't worry, them drovers will be so busy chasing critters they won't have time to spit. All right, let's go. Oh, is that all, Mr. Marshay? That's all I can find, Mr. Worldly. Uh, see if you can find some pants, will you? I have a pressing on heating. You sure know how to slick people up. Ah, I knew they'd need me eventually. There comes a time when a man must look his best. Quick, Marshay, help me. Hurry up with those boots. The herd's getting away. Here they are. Here they are. Oh, yeah, yeah, Wolsey, why did you ever take them in the first place? I, uh... The donut. Don't answer. All right, all of you. Get out there and round them up as best you can. Everybody. You mean you're going in shorts alone? I'll take Pete with me. That's all we can spare with a herd scattered to kingdom come. Yeah, well, if he hadn't taken... I them... know, I know. Get moving. Mr. Boss, we better hurry because they can light that fire any time the wind changes. No, oh, they'll still have to load those hides. They can't leave before sunup. Who's got my other boots? This ain't my boot! Sir, oh, Wilter, you'll be going into town, too. You, you'd better pack your wagon. You mean I'm taking the stage, sir? Wouldn't you say it's about time? Yes, I... I guess so, sir. But... But what? Well, maybe one of those hunters shot his lordship. If it's the last thing I do, I'd like to settle with the coward. Oh, no, Woolsey, we'll leave that to the law. You know, there is just the chance that you might bungle that, too. Yes, I, I suppose so, sir. Oh, uh, Mr. Wishbone, uh, would you come with me? I have some little gifts for the men, small tokens of appreciation for all they've done for us. Well, it isn't necessary. Oh, please, I haven't much time. And this is for you, Mr. Wishbone. You ready? Oh, yes, Master Paper. Well, goodbye, Mr. Wishbone. And uh, you'll say cheerio to the others for me, won't you? Oh, sure. I should like to inquire about the next stage east. Next stage won't be Lamara. If you want a room, sign the register. Well, uh, your establishment looks uh, fairly clean. One dollar in advance. I'm a livery man. Table boy says you want to see me. Yes, I I'm interested in disposing of my wagon and team. I thought perhaps you might know of a buyer. Might. Real nice rig and a mighty fine team. Uh, you may tell anyone who's interested that they were owned by Lord Ashton, one of the best judges of horseflesh in England. Oh, well. Oh, oh we, we, we'd be only too glad if you'd honor us as a guest until the stage arrives. Does Lord Ashton have any more luggage? Uh, there's a portmanteau in the wagon. Right away, sir. Lord Ashton? Not really. Yes. Is he alone? He seems to be. <gasps> Imagine, Lydia. Nobility here in Sharps. Someone from England. Oh, please, Emily. Undoubtedly, there's a Lady Ashton someplace. Now, will you relax and stop trying to marry me off? Oh, Lydia, you make me feel more like your mother than your sister-in-law. Besides, you're much too young and attractive to remain a widow all your life. I am not interested. Stuff and nonsense. Time you got out of those miserable black weeds and blossomed a little. You should meet him, Lydia. Come along, Lydia. But I haven't finished. And I just can't. Of course go up to not. Man. I'll have Thurman arrange a proper introduction. Now come on. I'm gonna see what he looks like first. Uh, Mr. Wimple. Yes, Mrs. Osgood. Uh, will you put our luncheon on my husband's bill? Yes, Mrs. Osgood. Oh, how extremely clumsy you are. Very. Oh, thank you. You're so very kind. Uh, oh, thank you, madam. It's a pleasure to be of service. 
Oh, uh, madam, uh, I believe this belongs to the lady. Oh, I'll give it to her. And thank you, your lordship. Oh, did you say lordship? Yes, I... Uh... Oh, no, madam. It's just Woolsey. Woolsey? Uh, yes, madam, if you please. Lily, dear. Dear Emily. What did he say? He said to call him Woolsey. Oh, my dear, how wonderful. Lord Woolsey Ashton saying that to you. Wait till we tell this to Thurman. Mayor Osgood, this isn't just our concern. Your whole town is in danger. But I know Bob Driscoll. He wouldn't be that careless. That man has even poisoned water holes to make a kill. We lost 30 head of bees. Now, what do you call that? Believe me, gentlemen, I have no love for hide men. They're a dirty, brawling lot. But this town owes its existence to the skins they ship east. And business is business. Thurman! Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had company. That's quite all right, my dear. We've just about finished talking. Lord Ashton is here. Lord Ashton? Yes. We just saw him at the bison head. Emily, I'm sure Thurman has more important business to attend to than arranging for me to meet Lord Ashton. Oh, listen to her. He's already shown interest enough to ask her to call him Woolsey. Probably because he's here on business and his wife's 6,000 miles away. Lydia. I beg your pardon, ladies, but if you really wanted to meet Lord Ashton... Oh, do you know him? Well, as a matter of fact, we came into town with him. He was a guest on our trail drive. Yes, uh, he, he wants to learn about the cattle business. Oh. He does, huh? Well, there's a great deal of British capital being invested in this part yes, of the country. Yes, so I understand. And if his lordship is interested in making a few... Uh... Oh, oh, excuse me, ladies. Uh, this is Mr. Favor and... Uh, uh, Nolan. Uh, Mr. Nolan, uh, my wife, my sister. How do you How do? You do? Uh, sit down, sit down. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. You know... It just occurred to me a banquet in honor of his lordship might not be a bad idea. Uh, get to know one another better. Oh, Thurman, that would be perfect. You see, I've uh, had some experience in the field of foreign exchange, and if his lordship would be interested in making a few investments out here... Well, of course we'll mention that. Is his lordship married? No. No, he isn't, ma'am. Oh, really, Emily? I do wish you'd speak to her, Thurman, or I'm going to be too embarrassed to go. Now, Emily, Lydia has a point there. I don't want her to be uncomfortable, and it's very important that she be there. Important? It's the purpose of the whole affair. Well, not exactly. We do have his lordship to consider. But Lydia has lived in England, and she seems to know the exact thing to do and say to make things go smooth. Honestly, I hope you gentlemen won't give his lordship the wrong impression. Oh, of course not. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I have nothing against the man. I found him charming. You see? And all this fuss over a title is something I'm sure would be as objectionable to him as it is to me. That's quite right, ma'am. Uh, but you will mention the banquet. It would be a great honor to our entire community. Oh, believe me, we'll do everything we can. Won't we, Mr. Nolan? Oh, yes, sir. We'll, uh, we'll talk to his lordship right away. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Dear lady, <sighs> may I? It's impossible, utterly impossible, Master Favor. What, go down there and pose as his lordship? Why, they'd see right through me. Not with these clothes on. Put on his lordship's clothes? Oh, no, sir. Don't worry, they'll fit. But that's not the point. Besides, I was just on my way down to the sheriff's office to tell him about his lordship's murder. Oh, no, no, you can't do that yet. No, but you don't understand. What you're asking is for me to do something that is entirely contrary to my nature. Uh, a leopard could remove his spots easier. No, I, I'm just not a blue blood, sir. And whatever's in my veins has turned to water. Maybe we ought to give him an ep of this. It says hundred proof. Great. Get a glass. I'm a gentleman's gentleman, Master Faber, and that's all the gentleman I can ever be. You're a man, Woolsey. And it's time you stood in your own two feet. And drink this down. What is Lordship's brandy? Come on, drink it up. Now, you said back on the drive you wanted to be of some use to me. This is your big chance. Yes, I know, I know, sir. But, but they're going to set that fire tomorrow, and you're the only one who can stop it. Come on, sit down. Here, we'll put these on while we oh. tell you what to say. Oh. 
Imagine you gentlemen dressing me. He's on his way. But that's, that's my country, tis of thee. That's, that's our song. It happens to be England's, too. They call it God Save the Queen. Oh, lucky coincidence. Here he comes. Doesn't he look impressive? Good evening, Your Lordship. Pleased to meet you, sir. Welcome to Sharps, Your Lordship. My wife? We've met, Your Lordship. My sister, Lydia. I'm honored. Uh, so am I, madam. Right this way, Your Lordship. Uh, Mayor, this is a big thing for our town. I'm sure everybody's going to... Great thing for the town, Mayor. Oh, Mr. Haver. Oh, oh, Mr. Favor, I can't tell you how delighted we are that you were able to persuade his lordship to attend tonight. Well, it uh, took quite a bit of doing, but fortunately, Mr. Nolan and I managed. I haven't seen Lydia enjoying herself like this in years. And then Lord Ashton. Uh, well, then this, uh, uh, this bearer fellow uh, kept pointing into the bush and saying, Tembo, Mingi Tembo. Well, what's that? Uh, Swahili for elephant. Oh, <laughs> oh he was quite a tusker. <laughs> yes. Oh, but uh, you're not finding this interesting at all. But of course, it's fascinating. Do go on. Yes, uh, but I'd much rather hear something about you, Miss Lydia. Your life out here has been exciting too, I venture. I'm afraid it would seem quite dull to you, Lord Ashton. Oh, not at all. Uh, you see, Miss Lydia, the people I've encountered here are rather like their country. There's a, there's a sort of um, bigness about them, uh, an honesty, uh, a warmth. Mm. Oddly enough, those are the very same qualities we admire so much in you, Lord Ashton. Oh, it, uh, it would please me much more if you would call me simply a Woolsey. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> How's that? Much better. <laughs> you see, Miss Lydia, that's really my name. You were going to tell us about the elephant hunt, uh, Your Lordship. Oh. oh, oh, yes. That's right. But what happened? Well, uh, I had him squarely in my sights when... Good heavens. Oh, no, that's no way to open a bottle of bubbly. Uh, it's really quite simple, my good man. It's all in the, the thumbs, you see. In the thumbs. <laughs> oh, my, how delightful the Democrats. <laughs> Thank you. I think you used good judgment. <laughs> <laughs> I should like to propose a toast to our distinguished guest. Gentleman, scholar, and a darn good sport. Here, here. That's right. Here, here. <laughs> here, here. <laughs> to the queen, God bless her. To, to the, the queen. queen. To the queen. Speech. Yes. Speech. Yes, yes go oh, ahead, George. Oh, Let's oh, have oh, a few oh, words. Oh, 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 well, uh, our host and friends. <laughs> in all my travels, I have never met a warmer welcome uh, than in your fair city. I, uh, I have learned a great deal about your country uh, from my good friend, Master uh, Mr. Favor. Uh, the days of the wild buffalo, the hunter, the Indian, and the outlaw are numbered. Uh, this is why I urge you to listen very carefully to your mayor when he tells you of the imminent danger that is threatening your city. Yes, 
I shall be proud to join you in protecting and ensuring the glorious future that lies before us all. Hey, boss. Yeah, look. Hello, Osgood. What's the delegation for? We hear you're gonna start a range fire. You mean we're planning a kill to give you boys more hides than you can handle? It isn't worth the risk, Driscoll. Is that what them drovers say? That's what we all say. You men know better than to listen to that siwash outfit. If it wasn't for us hunters, you wouldn't have a town. I've set that far, old boy, and they jolly well won't have a town. Who's this bird? Lord Ashton. Lord Ashton. That's right, my good man. And these good people are not going to risk all that they hold dear just to satisfy the greed of some, uh, some buffalo hunter. Well, I ain't just some buffalo hunter. And if Bison Bob Driscoll's word don't count more than some four-flusher who is trying to pass himself off as Lord Ashton. What's he mean, Ashton? It's clear enough to me. And when a man's honor is at stake, there can be only one answer. Such a, such a slur is unforgivable. I demand immediate satisfaction. Hold it, Driscoll. His lordship's not armed. No, but I very soon will be. Uh, Mr. Wishbone. Yeah, uh, your lordship. That box I gave you, will you bring it to me, please? Mr. Favor, Mr. Nolan, I appoint you my seconds. Seconds. Choose your seconds, Mr. Driscoll. I don't know what you're talking about. The code duello. The code what? Duello, meaning duel. One bullet each, back to back, walk ten paces, turn and fire at will. That's the way. Well, all right. If you want to get killed fancy, I'll be glad to oblige. I'll even pin a flower on your vest afterwards. Mr. Osgood, will you be kind enough to officiate? Well, as, as mayor, I guess it's my duty. Hey, look, sir. Look, you'd better hold up on this. I got you into this. And I'll get us out. Gentlemen, choose your weapon. You're really serious. An insult to the name of Ashton must be avenged. <laughs> your funeral. This has all gone much too far. I'm going to tell Osgood No, now. please, Mr. Favor. I have my reasons. You must believe me. Mr. Woolsey, you're going to wind up with a bullet right between your eyes. Perhaps. But though I wasn't born a gentleman, Mr. Pete, I can still try to die like one. Ten paces, then turn and fire at will. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Action! No, 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 stand back. Hold on there. Am I supposed to stand here and let him shoot? That's up to his lordship. No, no, I'm not his lordship. I was just his valet. What? You see? Take his gun away. No, no, not till I've had my go at it. You can't let him. It's not a gunfight. It's playing cold-blooded murder. Not precisely. You had your chance, and that's more than you gave Lord Ashton. You don't know what he's talking about. You wouldn't have known that I was an imposter. 
If you hadn't murdered his lordship. It was an accident. I just meant to scare him. Is that why you shot him in the back? Just a minute. You better sit down. Uh, you heard bad? No, not half as much as I shall be at what those people say. Well, mister, uh... Oh, Woolsey. Just plain Woolsey. As a banker, I can't say I like being fooled. But one thing you gotta admit, Thurman, he sure stood up to Driscoll, and that was no fooling. And that speech he made last night, now that was that rip snorter, wasn't it, Osgood? Yeah, it was at that. <laughs> well, I guess the joke's on us. I, uh, I'm sorry about your sister, sir. China, probably. It isn't but 3.30 in the morning. Oh. Sorry, boss. I didn't know you was there. What are you all doing up in the middle of the night? Just anxious to get to work, boss. Well, now, I'm real proud that everybody is taking such an interest in their work. Especially since it's the first time on the whole drive I haven't had to kick you out of the blankets. Yeah, but Abilene's just over the hill there. Abilene has been over the hill for the last ten years. It will stay there for another two hours. So relax. And pull out like we usually do at sunrise. Ooh. What are you doing there, Toothless? Oh, shining my plates. Well, you finally gonna put those things in, huh? <laughs> I thought you were waiting to be buried in them. No, no, I'm just waiting for Abilene. Yeah, you're gonna flash those pearly chops at some dance hall, Queen Toothless, and that's gonna be the end of your money. <laughs> hey, Granny, what are you doing? Trying to get the jump on us? I don't jump so good with his back. You know, one thing I can never understand about your back, Don, you can sit up playing poker three days running and never feel a twinge. Yeah, well, it only hurts when he loses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Don, you must be real lucky in love. I'm going out and relieve Huggins. Morning, Larry. Ain't a bit early for relief. Thought you might be ready for some hot coffee. I sure am. Uh... Hey. Yeah, I felt funny for a minute. You're burning with fever. I better get wish. No, no, I'll, I'll be all right. I'm all right now. I guess I'm just a little punchy, sitting up in the saddle all night. <laughs> well, it's almost all over now. A couple hours, and you can start your celebrating. Oh, not so much for me. Can't do much for Ryan on 25 bucks. I mean, that's all I can keep out. I send the rest back to my folks. Yeah. Last time I saw my wife and kids, I was sitting on the back of a wagon, pulling out of a Vicksburg cemetery. Thousand years ago. Never had a picture of them. Getting so I can't hardly remember what they looked like. Maybe that means it's time to start a new family. Maybe it does. Find a good woman, buy a little shop, raise some big sons. I'm gonna do it this trip. I mean it. Yeah. Every year, my back gets worse. 
I don't think I could stand another drive. But I'd die before we even got this far. So when we pull into Abilene, I take my pay, I walk on past them poker tables, right past them, right on out of town. And I don't look back no matter what anybody says. Oh, no. You take it easy, Larry. I'll be right back. Favor, young Larry Huggins ain't feeling too good. What's wrong? I don't know. He's kind of weak and drowsy. I will wish he's busy scrounging up breakfast. Look, since we're this close to town, why don't you take him into town with you and find a doctor? I'll get somebody to take over. All right. Oh, uh, we'll be at the hotel, the Texas house. Well, uh, tell you the truth, Mr. Favor, I... Kind of planned on staying somewhere else. This place called the Oddity House, the other side of town. Well, I'll send your money over there, then. It ain't that I don't want to stay with the rest of the outfit. Oh, I know. Oh, I think you're smart. Best way to quit is just up and quit. Yeah, same for me. Yeah, my last drive. Well, how come, Mr. Paper? Well, I've been promising my kids and myself for a long time. Now I'm going to do it. I got a little spread over near the Missouri line. House, stream, riding horses for Gillian and Maggie. You bought it, boss? Gee, that's great. Not as good as put down $2,500 option money. Yeah, I'll pay the men off. Get a good night's sleep. Then the first thing, I'll ride out of Abilene, out of the cattle business, and back into a family again. Mr. Favor, I wish you all the luck. Good luck to you, Granny. Thanks. so handsome. He's so handsome, he almost made me swoon. Better watch yourself, Molly. You know what I told you about drovers? They're worse than sailors when it comes to playing a girl fast and loose. I like to listen to the way they talk about the things they done, and then telling me how pretty I am, and asking me if, if, if I wouldn't like to have a trinket. Oh, it isn't that I want them to buy me a trinket. It's just that they want to buy it. And for me. Whose outfit is this, honey? Gil Favors. Give me a break, Jack. Let them lose their money before you start trouble. Trouble? Ain't gonna be no trouble, Vader. In the last three months, every time you get a drink or two into you, all you could talk about was a fight you had with the ramrod and how you spent a month and a half in the hospital. Now, if this saddle tramp's got to die, should not make any difference to you if he dies broke? Do you?
How about your crew? And no crewman, no What? Drive's over there, no, no. Well, he ain't so far as you're concerned. I'm holding you responsible for every nickel of damage they do. Now, you could have one big time trying to collect. That's it, boys. That's what? What? No more rooms. We're full up. Full up? I'm sorry. There's a couple of boarding houses down the street. Well, maybe we don't want to stay in any boarding houses. Hey, wait a minute. What about that place that Grenfell's staying in? The Oddity House? <laughs> you feeling all right, Rowdy? No, no. It's a hotel. Granny said so. No, oh, what's good enough for Granny is good enough for us. Uh, hold your horses. Granny picked the Oddity House so he could be alone for a change. Save his money for once. Well, we'll help him. We'll, uh... We'll give him strength. Yeah! Huh? Come on. Uh, all right, see the rest of you at the Oddity House in half an hour. I'll work out the shares. Okay. Uh, well, 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 hey, wish ain't that Huggins horse over there? Yeah, sure looks like it. I'm kind of glad we came here. Oh, Granny's gonna get a bang out of this. Oh, real bang. I can see him now. Come on, anybody home? Hey, Clark. Huh? What is this, a hotel or a funeral parlor? Hey, 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 Clark! Oh, here he is. Good morning. A beautiful morning. Morning, the manager. A <laughs> manager? Desk clerk, owner, Edward R. Dooley. Oh, Mr. Dooley, we could use some rooms. Here? Yeah, here? What's the matter with here? I usually don't get drovers this far out. Um, I, I mean, all the saloons are the other end of town. Th this is a very quiet area. And I don't like to be disturbed when I've got a hangover. Yeah, and besides, you already got two drovers, Huggins and Grenfell. We saw their horses. Well, yeah. Sir, would you please put down that OJ Dar? Oh, did you are, huh? Dog, if you put a fistful of flowers in there and look just like a vase. It is you <laughs> would. Look, don't worry about your objadars, friend, because we ain't even going to be here long enough to hardly touch the bed. Right. Right. So, uh, Mr. Dooley, uh, uh, about the lady guests, you got any lady guests? Well, there? yes, we have a few. Well, where are they? Uh, they're out right now. All my guests are... Uh, sir, if you're going to put your foot on the couch, please, would you mind removing the spurs? Sure is a fussy cuss, ain't he? Absolutely terrible. Oh, say, I could use some hot water for a bath. Uh, yes, sir. There's some on the stove. Yeah, save me a little, way. Eh? Oh, you're in a hurry. You go on ahead. I want to get up and see Huggins anyway. Oh, yeah. How is he? Mr. Huggins is not so well. Uh, the doctor examined him a little while ago. Well, I guess I better go up and have a look at him. What room's he in? 27. Hey, wait a second. We'll let him go up. Yeah, yeah. Now you try to get some shut eye, Larry. Doctor said you was to have peace and quiet. Look at his face. I told you he'd be glad to see us. Yeah. <laughs> it's a favor. What in creation are you all doing over here? I'm sorry, Granny. I tried to stop him. <laughs> Well, he hasn't got much fever. What did the doctor say was wrong with him? He didn't say. Just looked both of us over and rushed out. Well, just like some of those city doctors trying to be mysterious. Well, I'll give him a good dose of sassafras root and he'll be as good as new tomorrow. How's he going, boy? A little better, Mr. Favor. Got a good price for the herd. I got your share whenever you want it. Thanks, Mr. Favor. Hot water! Oh, yeah, oh, that's yeah! yeah. Hey, that's mine! Yeah. Oh, say, uh, what did the doc say about your back? Mm, nothing more than I know. Told me I had to keep off horses. Said I pinched some nerve in my spine and keep on riding and end up a cripple. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. No more of that. A couple of extra overs. Make you feel funny, Mr. Favor? Funny? 
It feels like my insides are laughing fit to burst. <laughs> Yes. They'll have to go someplace else, Dooley. How does that look? It'll do. It won't do! Chills in spring. And you know very well that smallpox. That's what I know. And nobody is gonna spread it through this town. All right, inside. But now, look, I'm an American citizen. I don't have to take inside, orders. Inside, citizen. You too, trail boss. How long do you think you're going to keep these drovers away from dance halls? You heard him same as I did. Four days for some. The rest as long as there's a danger to my town. Well, look, I got to get out of Abilene by tomorrow morning. I'm buying a spread a couple hundred miles east of here. It ain't going to fly away. It very well could fly away. You see, I just was able to put down option money on that place. The drive took longer than I figured. I got to get the rest of the money there by Friday noon or lose the place in the $2,500 option. Money. I'm sorry, Mr. Faber. I got two kids dependent on this ranch. It's still inside. Gentlemen, this isn't going to be pleasant for you to hear, but you've got to hear it. I have reason to believe that your friend, Mr. Huggins, has the smallpox. So I'm going to have to vaccinate every one of you. And you will all have to remain here, quarantined, in this building. For how long? Four days. Oh. Oh, okay. So let's line up and get it over with. You ain't keeping us in here. Sheriff! Get out of my way, Sheriff. Put them guns away and take off them gun belts. You better get out of the way, Sheriff, while you're still able to move. I want them guns now. Have you line up. Let the doctor scratch your arms. I'm going to need your help with these men. Drive's over. I got no right to give orders no more. Mr. Faber, there are kids in this town who never hurt a living soul. Did you ever see a little child die of smallpox? <laughs> Why, it's funny how one little needle can hurt so much, huh? Back in line. Thanks again. Nothing. If you'll give me the name and address of the people you're buying that spread from, I'll send them a telegram, tell them what's happened, and ask them to give you a little more time. Smallpox. They're in quarantine at the Oddity House. Since yesterday, they can't get out. That's why I like to play cards with you, Jack. You're such a poker face, never show your disappointments. Sure, I'm disappointed. For them, six months on the trail with them stinking beeves, now they gotta be holed up. Tough, but think about my problems. I've dead heard money spent. Who is it this time, Veda? Another smooth-talking guy with a sob story? Nah. You'd end up broke as usual anyway. You're the last man that should talk, Jack. I listen to one or two of your sob stories and wound up broke. We're different. We're partners. In a nice kind of way. In a nice kind of blackmailing way. Veda, you're always thinking the worst of me. Like thinking I'd go around telling people you was run out of Dodge City for crooked dealing. I learned my lesson, Jack, and you know it. I ain't dealt a crooked card since. I know it. I know. But there's a lot of people around here. Lost money to you might not believe that. Might even get mad and come looking for you. You know I wouldn't want that to happen for all the world. You are a skunk. You're a dirty, stinking skunk. Look, maybe we could jump. Take off their clothes and put them on. That way at least two of us would get out. Well, but which two? 
Well, me, naturally, since I thought of it, the rest of you could draw lots. What do you figure one of them deputies makes in this town? Why? Maybe if we all chipped in and made up a kitty. You mean bribe our way Outside of worrying about Huggins, this don't bother me at all, Mr. Faber. Keep me out of gambling houses till some of the steam runs out. Pretty rough on you, though. That ranch you was planning on getting. Oh, yeah. And people will give you more time once they hear about all this. It can't be easy sweating it out. Uh, I must be out of my mind listening to all this claptrap with all the worry I got. What worries have you got? Mushy. Oh, I'll leave him alone, Wishbone. He'll be all right. Well, you don't know him the way I do. Out there on the town all by himself without me to watch over him. Yeah, well, we got all the money, so he can't get in too much trouble. Uh, you know, maybe we could just break straight up. A nine to three against the sheriff and his deputy. Seven to three without Hoggins and Grenfell. What do you think about that, Mr. Faber? No, I don't know whether you're kidding or not, but either way, the answer is no. How's that? Well, nobody can leave until the doc says so. Are you still giving orders around here? That's an order. Maybe you don't realize that this drive's over with. Maybe you don't realize there's a man upstairs with a killing disease. You mean maybe he has a killing disease? Maybe is enough. You know, there's something I've been wanting to tell you ever since we left Laredo, in fact. Take it easy, Rowdy. No, no, really. I, for, for six months now, I've been taking your boss and, you know, and listening to you shoot your mouth off and walking around like you owned the whole world. Well, I don't have to take it now, you know? In fact, next time you open your mouth to me, I'm going to shove my fist so far down your throat, you're going to choke on it. Hey, there's a good-looking woman out here. Yeah, Marcia. Far enough, Rita. Put the gun down, Sheriff. I'm going inside. No, you ain't. Roddy, ain't that Jack Harris? Now, what do you want? I want to go see my friends. Used to work with these boys, Sheriff. Brought them a little Abilene cheer. He's got liquor. Sheriff! Hey! Get out of here! All right, you two have had your fun. Now go back where you came from. You show me the law that says I can't go inside that hotel. If there ain't one, I'm making it right now. Nobody goes in or out until the time is up. Now beat it, both of you. Sure. I ain't fooling. Gosh, he's turning them away. Oh, oh gee. Gosh. Now, don't you start giving me trouble. See, hey, um, it's a dealer down at the Sloan Edge. Well, what of it? She ain't getting in. The boys are getting real edgy. She could help uh, keep them quiet. This hotel is quarantined. Well, she knows that. If she's willing to take her chances, that's her business. Are you worried about the town or her? What about the guy with her, Harris? He's got a nice big bag full of booze. Yeah, they'll pass by him, too. Later, Harris. Come back. Hey, the boss fixed it up. Howdy-do, ma'am. Howdy-do. Uh, gentlemen, this is Miss Veda Nordquist, one of the best dealers in town. And she's brought her cards with her. Well, you just come right along with us, then. <laughs> Jack, uh, what do you got in the bag there? Why don't you take a look and see, Teddy? All righty. Get all righty. What are you after, Jack? I ain't after nothing. I was riding through and heard what happened to you boys. Got to thinking how much I'd appreciate somebody bringing me a bottle of fires in your boots. And, well, we all were pretty good friends once. <laughs> you came in here risking smallpox for your old friends? Oh, I had smallpox back in San Antonio. Can't get it more than once. Look, Grady, I ain't saying either one of us is right in that card game. But I do say that both of us ought to stop acting like a couple little kids. Now... How about it? Well, Jack, you man enough to put out your hand. I guess I'm man enough to take it. Good. Let's drink on it. Right. Black Jack or Stud? Stud's good enough for us. Right. No bugs in this deck. No wild cards. Pie only. 
No limits. <laughs> Fill me up over there, will you? Ace first. Ace fits. $10. Why don't you do it, Mr. Faber? I thought you'd uh, help keep him from wanting to bust out. Yeah, I know, but... Look, I ain't your herder. Express $20. Mr. Faber. That's it, just the kings. I got two pairs. All right, Benny. Look, you. Your ass board back. I'll give it to you. Wanna sit in, cowboys? Plenty room. Nah, I'll just watch. Yeah. Fair kings, best $20. Oh, tell me you got wiped out already? No, I just couldn't concentrate. Keep worrying about mush. Mr. Wishbone! Mr. Wishbone! Mr. Wishbone! I was wondering if I could get my money, Mr. Wishbone. Maybe you could just toss it out. So you want your money. Now, look here, you two. You leave that little boy alone. Oh, Mr. Wishbone, you shouldn't talk to these ladies like that. Why, one of them needs a desperate operation. And one of them's going to sell me some solid gold stock real cheap. Is he joking? He hasn't got sense enough to joke. So you want your money, huh? Well, yes, sir. Just toss it out. Well, I can't do that. The sheriff won't let me. You'll have to come in here. Well, sure, Mr. Wishbone. Uh, you wait just right here. Well, come on in. Howdy, Mr. Faber. Howdy. Welcome to the club. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. How are the boys on the outside? Oh, well, they're just winding around, going to all the free things like uh, uh, funerals and... Uh, well, can I have my money, Mr. Wishbone? No, you can't. But you said, and I lied. Well, excuse me for a while. Yeah, I'm quick. No. Well, I think I'll wait till my luck changes. Here's a present for you. Play it. I don't take charity. Well, let's pretend I already lost it. Come on, Mushy. Why'd you play it for him? Me? Sure. It's his money you can't lose. Huh. Sit down. What do you have? Showdown. One card. Hey, how about that? You're gonna make that boy rich. Again? Easy. Would you like to change the stud? Sure. By the way, um, what's your name? Don Grenfell. Hiya, Don. Hiya, Veda. What do you mean I can't leave? I already told you I had the smallpox down in Texas. You got any proof of that? Oh, no, but my friend Rowdy backed me up. That's right, Sheriff. He almost died of it. That's your story. And I don't believe it. Got to get out of here. Yeah, you heard the man. Look, Rowdy, I'm fixing to get married. 
Yeah, well, Jack, I'm afraid she's just gonna have to wait. She's coming in on the train tomorrow morning. All alone, Rowdy. She don't know a soul in this town. Nobody. No place to go. Nothing. I can't stay here. You shouldn't have come here in the first place. Yeah, I know bad... that. But I never figured he'd keep me here. I felt so sorry for you guys. I've got to get out. Hey, uh, maybe you'd like to go too, huh? <laughs> there ain't too much chance of that. Well, the uh, boss say no. You know, uh, maybe there is uh, a way of getting out of here. How many men we need? Not too many. Do you have any money of your own? Let's keep going. He wouldn't shoot his friends. Yeah, we ain't his friends, though. We're his drovers. The drive's over. Yeah, seems everybody knows that but him. Oh, gee. Thanks again, Faber. Come on, get a move on. Look, I told you before, and I ain't telling you again, you're not the boss anymore. Well, there is certain advantages to not being trail boss, ain't there? Oh. Mr. Faber, I got something for you. Hmm. Another buyer, if you do not deliver balance of money on time, you will forfeit deposit and ranch. Well, they can't do this to you. But they can't. Um, Mr. Faber. Me? Would you like to save your money? I sure would, Mr. Faber. Go with me. Mr. Faber. Oh, Mr. Faber. I ain't gonna forget what you did for me. I got more than a dozen men deputized now. Yeah, you can start forgetting it right now. We're going out of here. What are you talking about? I got an answer to that telegram you sent. They're selling the place out from underneath me. I'm real sorry to hear that, Mr. Faber, but... You see, those kids have been figuring on that place for most a year now, and I don't want to seem disappointed. You know what you're doing's a wrong thing. Or right or wrong, you're going over with us to get our horses, and uh, we'll ride straight out of Abilene. We won't get near nobody. What about where you're going? There are people there, too. You're going to have to let them worry about that. Now, let's go. Shooting at us when we tried it. It's a little different now, ain't it? 
Yeah, but he came back, and on his own. Anyway, trying to save his ranch is a lot different than just going out for booze and fancy women and gambling. I got some 15 men posted around this hotel now with orders to shoot on sight. It's their wives and kids that are in danger. So when they shoot, they're going to shoot to kill. Huh. We uh, ain't got the fancy gals all the whiskey's talking about, but uh, we do have a couple of bottles and uh, a real good looking car dealer, so uh, let's make the best of it. Huh? Favor, I got a hunch all my bad luck ran out with Quince's money. Fifty on a pair of tens. I fold. You calling, Toothless? All I got is ten bucks. The bet's fifty. Got anything else you can put up? A watch or something? Now, what good would those be to me? Well, they're, they're all I have left in the world, and, and they cost most $100, and they hardly ever been used. They'll do. You win. You better get out of the game, Toothless, while you still got some money to fold. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it's getting almost morning, now, and I am perishing for some sleep. Thank you, ma'am. Ten on the king. Pair of nines. Fifty on the pair of kings. You haven't got it, Beta. Up 300. 300. And 300 more. Call. Three kings. Oh, that's it. Broke? Yep. I'm sorry, cowboy. Man can't stand to lose, he shouldn't gamble. Right? Going into the kitchen, see if I can scrounge up some coffee. Like some, Vader? Yeah, I would. Jack? Oh. Well, those boys treated you pretty well. That's the biggest pile of money I've seen you put together for a long time. And you ain't seen none of it. It's a steak, Jack. A big, fat steak. Means I can get out of Abilene, out of this racket, out of everything. Sure. But first, you're going to do me a little favor. No. I'm not going to do any more favors for you, Jack. You're going to do your own dirty work. It's very simple. A little while, Rowdy and me will come down those stairs. All you got to do is take a couple of cups of nice steaming coffee to them two poor deputies outside. I not heard a word you said. Veda, you keep thinking the worst of me. You're just naturally going to bring out the worst. Don't threaten me about Dodge City anymore, Jack. I'm going to go somewhere where I don't give two cents what the people of Abilene think about me. Mm. How about the drovers? Yeah, what about the drovers? Well, how do you think they'd feel knowing you deal crooked? I dealt straight to them drovers every blessed card. Straight? Straight off the bottom of the deck, like that last card to Toothless. So nobody saw it but me. That was for him to win, Jack. Sure. That time for him, other times yourself. That ain't true. Them drovers just have to think it's true. Now, they lost a lot of money. That cost them six months of their lives. They get mad, real mad. There's no way you can leave this place to get away from them. Now, all you gotta do is take a couple of cups of coffee to them two deputies. A nice, friendly gesture after a long, cold night. Now, I won't do it. Sure you will. No, I won't. What's the trouble, Beta? No business of yours. You stay right here. I'll see you later, Beta. Main 
to butt in on something private, Vic. Oh, that's all right. It's been a long time since a man stood up for me. Especially a man that just lost $600 to me in one hand. You're a nice person, Don Grenville. What does a drover do when he's broke? Oh, always another drive next year. New bankroll. I mean, before next year. Plenty. Work as a cow hand, break horses. Don't you fret about that money. Almost daylight. I'm gonna get some sleep. Good night, Beta. I'm real proud to have met you. Don, do you know where Mr. Favor's bedroom is? Yeah, sure. You uh, tell him to keep an eye on Rowdy. Rowdy? That's all I'm gonna say. I didn't even say that. She is. Oh, let's go. You sure you don't want to back out of this, Roddy? No, no, I told you I'd help you out. Come okay, on. Okay, remember, when she gives them the coffee and they take it, you run out, wrap arms around them, kind of bang them together, and it'll give me time to make a break for it. All right. Uh... Pest anyway. Coffee, get it. Coffee being out in the cold all night. Get back, Miss Vita. Lucky for you, your friend stopped you. Yeah, you're lucky you can move at all. Making a flying tackle like that with that trick back of yours. Was he gonna be all right, Doc? Oh, a couple of days in bed. He'll be as good as he ever will be, which ain't gonna be much. But I'm telling you again, Mr. Grenville, you stay off them horses, or you'll end up like this permanent. Oh, well, he isn't gonna ride anymore. He's gonna take his share and go back to Texas and open up a little store. You do that, Mr. Grenville. You do just that. All right, you men. I gave you all a clean bill of health, so why don't you all just get, get this poor man a little rest. Yeah, all right, Let's Granny. Go. We'll see you later, Granny. Yeah, yeah. I might buy some pickles from you sometime. Another drive next year, another bankroll. Here's the six hundred dollars that you lost to me. What's that for? And here's another six hundred dollars to keep it company. You open up that store and consider me a silent puck. Now, wait a minute. Beta. I've gambled a lot more on worse men than you, Don Grenville. Maybe this is one investment that'll pay off. Come with me. No. No, you go and make a success out of the store and try me again. What do you think about it? Yes, Don Grenville. I'll be thinking about it. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Favor. And, and if you're in Abilene again, you, you'll be sure to drop by and 
Uh, I'll be very happy to recommend some nice place for you and the boys to stay. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Paver, I want to thank you for the people in Abilene, and I'm sorry about you losing your ranch. Oh, there's other ranches. Now, Rowdy, I want to tell you, we're running Jack Harris out of town. As soon as the doctor can wire up his jaw. Oh, boss, I, uh, I apologize. Rise of 50-year-old skills. Where, boy, next year I'm gonna up and drive around New Mexico all together. Por supuesto. The only water we will find around here is straight down. Do you think maybe we should go back to the herd? No, not till we make sure. In your favor. The wagon? Uh, sounds maybe like a stage. It's in your favor. It's a runway. <laughs> Don't blame yourself, Bond. How could you have known, hiding under the seat as you were? Can't you, Miss Saddle? In a country like this, only a fool would waste water on a man who's already in his grave. Put it inside the poor man, Lieutenant. He doesn't need a bath. What up? Uh, there were Indians. Uh, they hit us about four miles back. Mr. Go favor. The boss and the cattle drive a mile or two back down the road. Uh-huh. Well, I'm not sure, Mr. Favor, but uh, I think they were Apaches. Apaches? This far north? The only honor in Apache knows is that said by his own shadow. You sound like you know pretty good. Every time Senor Domingo opens his mouth, out rolls a pearl of wisdom. <laughs> Take it easy. You got a couple of bullets in you. You know who did? Ghosts. Some sort of heathens. They were like any Indians I've ever known. They came at us in the shadows. As if killing was the only thing they'd ever known. Ghosts. Like from the dead. Like from the... as a stranger is a friend. Or should be. Senor Fever, about the one who calls himself Domingo. In my country, it is said a man who walks alone is only half a man. Oh, a ghost, Jesus? I'll tell you what. When he stands in front of the sun and don't cast no shadow, then I will start worrying, I promise you. Look, uh, Mr. Faber, we, uh, we seem to find ourselves in something of a predicament. You do? Well, I should think that would be obvious. All depends on what you plan to do, doesn't it, Lieutenant? <laughs> and Mr. Faber, you sound just like my superior on the teaching staff at West Point. The only thing missing is blue uniform. My wrong color. I did wear a pair of bars a couple of years back under General Lee. Uh-huh. 
<clears throat> well, let me put it this way. I could drive this stage if I had to, but I don't know the country ahead. You know the country behind? We can't turn back, Mr. Favor. My husband and I are already overdue for an engagement in San Francisco. A very important engagement. Mr. and Mrs. Butler are actors, and Shea is, is due for a job in uh, Sacramento, and, and I'm expected at the Presidio. Uh, it's my first frontier assignment. Oh, I see. And you, sir? You have a uh, pressing engagement? Well, the only engagement I have is with the man who has the horns and the long pointed tail. <laughs> Mr. Favor, are you familiar with the trail ahead? I do know that Caribou Station is about 12 miles due north. Well, after we got there, the, the men there could take over. I'm sure we could make it worth your while. Mm, yes, think it over, Mr. Favor. Bowman may offer you as much as $10 to afford safe conduct. Of course, that's about all he can offer, since he allowed a mealy mouth stage manager to take most of the profits from our last performance. Hang on to your money. The only thing I'm interested in at the moment is water. Hey, Zeus? Skeleton Lake's just above Caribou. Looks like it's going to be our closest water anyway. You want me to go back to the herd? Yeah, tell Roddy what's happened. Don't keep the herd moving until I catch up. Oh, senor favor. This Domingo made through a shadow, but his eyes, they stopped leading a long time ago. Tenga cuidado. Well, Lieutenant, you've been right topside. Keep your eyes open. Senor, since you were so interested in the trail, if you had to ride up in the boot, you can get a real good view from there. That's very good reasoning. Four eyes up there instead of two. We may even be able to see what a ghost looks like. but at least it doesn't bounce. Get the horses unhooked. Lieutenant, you start moving those animals up the row. What's a rush, Mr. Favor? It's because it's a little quiet doesn't mean I can start the Civil War again. The foster child of silence is death, Lieutenant. Not every battle is fought with bugle and cavalry charges. Come, let's get moving. Miss Favor, just what is this all about? Why do you keep them here? inside and stay away from the windows. Something wrong? Shut up and get inside. We may be leaving here in a hurry.
I'm all right. Just another gun, better in here than lying out there in the dust. Yeah, you take that window, shoot anything that moves. But uh, I'm no fetter. You will be before this is over. You will be. You, look after him. He came at you with a knife against your rifle. Still, it took three bullets to bring him down. Lieutenant! That's the first lesson you learn out here. Things just don't go by the book. Mingo, how many of there were? Oh, 10, 12, no more. 10 or 12 what? Who are they? What do they want of us? The Carillos don't need a reason to fight, senor. Blood is their one of life. The Carillos? They're supposed to be the oldest Apache tribe. Been living up in the Sunga de Cristo's reign since Montezuma's time. Story goes, no white man's ever seen him. Kept his eyes. Any the ones that hit you this morning? Not the same. Don't worry, my dear. When the man who owns this place comes back, those savages will vanish. Just like that. I'm afraid the station keeper won't be back. He's out in the well that's left of him. Uh. Certainly you aren't going to be intimidated by a pack of filthy savages. Now that's really amazing, Mrs. Butler. You haven't been within 50 feet of those savages and already you know they're filthy. Well, I'd say you have fair and working nose there. Delilah, my dear, we're doing all we can. You are doing all you can. How? By trying to play wronged Romeo to an audience of overpainted Juliets with rifles in their hands? This is life or death bone, not one of your cheap vaudeville circuits. Lila, please. Lieutenant, either you do something right now or... Or what? You will report him to your authorities? Perhaps one of those uh, filthy savages will carry your message. Miss Butler. We have one rifle and three revolvers. We can't run, and to make a frontal assault would be suicide. But we can't just sit here. I'm afraid that's what we're going to do. At least wait till it gets dark. Ms. Favor, what I can't understand is why Apaches, or especially the Icarillos, would raid the far north. Lesson number two, Lieutenant. An Indian has a set of values, all his own. They could have run your stage down this morning, but they decided to double back here and spring this little trap and set us up like fish in a barrel. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Well, it makes sense, all right, providing they want to take one of us alive. But why? What do they want of us? You might try asking the man who knew they were Hicarillos. Well, Domingo? Come on, oh. Like uh, Jonah in the belly of the whale. You're entitled to some answers. Until two months ago, De Carrillo called me a man of one of their own. Oh, yes. For 16 years, I put on their pants, share their lodging, kill their enemies, they call me White Eyes, the warrior who come to them from the setting sun. You mean... You actually lived with them? Yes. Contempt, senora, is the vice of fools. 
It's a great deal that the Apache can offer your people. But because of his pride and honor, and because of his rifle, there will never be eyes to see or ears to hear. I taught them new ways to outwit them in Breno and Keragao. And in return, they gave me sanctuary and peace. Sanctuary from what? From the voices of angry men, from the stench of a disease called hate, perhaps even from myself, does it matter? If you felt that way, why did you leave the Apaches? Man is not master of his own fate. There was a girl, a Mexican copy. I fought for her freedom, you know, to do that, I had to kill a chief. And your brothers outside took it from her? The man I just killed, the chief's son. The mind of a Carillo is like the point of an arrow. Once it is in motion, it's impossible to change the way. Why didn't you tell us this morning, when we still had a chance to outrun them? Because once the Carillo found the trap of stagecoach, there was no chance. Maybe not for you, but what about us? What point did you have to pull us down into your own private hell? The descent to hell is very simple, especially for those who do not have us to see. The next time you travel, senor, take more care in choosing your travel companions. What next time, because of you, none of us will get out of this alive. Mr. Ferris, I see only one way out of this. A way that Mr. Domingo himself pointed out from the book of Jonah. He said to them, what shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm to us? And Jonah said unto them, take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth, and the sea ceased its raging. At your service, senor, if you think you're man enough. They say throw him back to his patchy friends. The sooner the better. And what does military mind have to say, Lieutenant? Well, if it was up to me, Mr. Butler, I would say that it is better to lose one life than to lose six. But it's not up to me. It isn't up to any of us. You accuse a man of condemning us and turn around and condemn him. We're all in this together. And besides, whatever Domingo is, he's another gun when we need. But they want him, not us. What about your driver, Miss Butler, and the gentleman outside in the well? To the Carrillo, life is but a cloud that appears, and then disappears. It has no meaning, means nothing. Even if they get it, there's no guarantee that it'd go with that. And it's hopeless. Oh, not as long as we can hold him off. Not as long as there's a chance I can reach my men. Words cannot put out the moons in your favor. Nor can they create life where there is only death. Look at their faces and you'll see what I see. A cemetery of hope. chase away those Indians, my dear, but might make living with them a little easier. It's always been the easy way, hasn't it, Bo? Even now, you're on stage, a make-believe man in a cardboard world. A coward dies many times before his death, Delilah. This and recreating the lives of better men, however trimmed with tinsel and artificial theatrics, 
only makes what I am a little less painful. It might help. The only thing that'll help me is a one-way ticket back to civilization without the pleasure of your company or your flask. Mr. Favorite, mm -hmm. you still think you've got a chance? Well, as long as a man believes he's got a chance, he always has one. I won't have to wait much longer. It's getting about as dark as it's going to get. Watch your shoulder. Well, I don't know what they're teaching to point these days, but me, I don't ride on my shoulder. It does look very good, but it'll keep us going. Best looking mess of beans i ever seen. Just fine. Mr. Domingo, you better eat something. No, oh, gracias, no. Mr. Domingo, would you mind if I asked you a question? Would it matter if I did? The Bible tells us that Ruth went to live among strange people, but only because she had to. What was your reason? What gods did your Indians have that give you peace? Man gives himself peace, muchacha. Not painted idols from a forgotten world. Then why search for it there? Why not among your own kind? Because I have a kind. The gun is less painful. Back to you. You all right? Yes, I think so. Nothing. Not even a shadow. That's the way it's going to stay until they think the fruit is ripe enough to pick. And then their rifles won't miss. Your Domingo, just give you lesson number four, Lieutenant. The Apache technique of taking an objective by waiting. Make sure way to beat him is to make sure you don't give him any target. Till I get back, you make sure it stays that way. Senor, your life means nothing to me, but your revolver does. Take my word, you try to wrap through and you will lose both. I uh, don't. No. Doesn't seem like there's much choice. You're wrong, Mr. Favor. You can stay here. Lesson number five. It's one I did learn at the point. Never attempt mission the enemy expects unless you have everything possible in your favor. I don't think I'd call that shoulder of yours a factor in our favor. And like I said, I don't ride on my shoulder. You don't ride at all. Since our friend here is not exactly the type to volunteer, I guess I win the strawberries. You win the strawberries? Look, Lieutenant, those are Apaches out there, not pictures in a textbook. And to them, those gold bars only mean one thing, a target they can't miss. Uh, I may be messed up, but at least I know what I'm doing. You haven't got a chance. This cult says I have six chances. I think that is pretty good odds. In a classroom, maybe. Not out there. Step away from the door. Ten Mr. Favor, I don't want to waste a bullet. I need it. Ma'am, Mr. Butler. Good luck, Lieutenant. All right, idiot. It's southeast then. Don't stop for nothing until you get to the herd. Don't worry, Mr. Favor. Even the second lieutenant couldn't miss 3,000 cows. All right, let's cover him. <laughs> Thank you. 
Better get some rest. It's gonna be a long night. This herd of yours, Mr. Favor, just how far away is it? Ten, twelve miles. Well, then if the uh, lieutenant gets through, he could be back with help by snap. Give take an hour or two. Well, uh, if, he, uh, if he doesn't make it, what then? Then we have another long day and a longer night. Don't worry about snap when he gets here. Better get back to your window, bud. Do that. Well, I can manage. No man can manage a woman's world, Mr. Domingo. And I consider a can of beans to be a woman's world. You will, <laughs> please. Sass, being busy helps. You go to California, muchacha. Why? Because I've never been there before. Because there, maybe. Maybe you will uh, find peace. It might last to be looked through so easily. Loneliness was his own face, muchacha. For everyone to see, if they look. Like you, Mr. Dingo, I have no kind. It was a home once, an Irish home, which meant it was filled with the wonders of Brian Baru, the mountains of the morn, good brown whiskey. And then, it wasn't a home anymore. My father and my brother joined the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and started a fight not even the legendary Finn McCool could finish. They brought their bodies home in a wheelbarrow. Iron wheels on cobblestones. The sound I'll hear every day of my life. Better than the sound of Don Quixote's lance breaking against the windmill of hopeless causes. Your father and your brother were fools, Muchacha. A fool walks in darkness, Mr. Domingo. Buried in his forgotten world with his painted idols. No. Only a brave man has the courage to face his world. And face himself. There are no mirrors in a coffin. I will keep my painted idols. And you keep your illusions, Chacha. Where you're going, you'll need them. Where I'm going? The golden promise of California. A rich land made richer with the blood of the Mexican. The Mexican who stood only to understand the meaning of the lash and the iron heel. You speak of uh, California, Mr. Domingo, as if you knew it well. I once lived in California. With a girl named Maria? Maria? Well, that's what you called Miche when her skirt caught fire. Quirk of memory. 
Something like that happened a long time ago. To a girl named Maria. What is it you fear? Your enemies outside, not in here. You have something to say, say it. Well, you said you became a carillo 16 years old. That you came to them from setting sun. That would be California. In the year 1853. For heaven's sakes, oh, can't you ever climb down off that stage? Why don't you go back to your window and play your scene for the savage out there? If nothing else works, maybe that'll drive them away. No, 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 no. The player has something to say. Let him say it. But I warn you, senor. I'm not a very good audience. Hey, let's take it easy, huh? We got more than enough to fight outside. It's all about Butler. A legend, Mr. Favor. A legend that may be more fact than fantasy. The only fantasy that you understand, senor, is this. God offers to every mind this choice between uh, repose and truth. This is my compromise, sir. A compromise of cowardice. And what is your choice? Repose or truth? Yeah, well, uh, maybe you'd better go back to your window, Butler. No, no, no. Not until I've solved my little riddle, Miss Taylor. Call the perverse last wish of a dying man. Delilah, my dear, do you recall the last three performances in Santa Fe? How could I ever forget such a smashing triumph? We played to an audience of 20 people, 10 of whom would speak English. And uh, who sat front row center on each of those nights? Charming, Mr. Domingo. Watching a couple of your performances doesn't elevate him to a legend. Not in itself, it doesn't. But coupled with the things that he has said and done since we first climbed into the stage to be rattled about like pennies in a poor box, might make a most interesting story. This play you were doing, what was it called? Oh, it was a brilliant piece of work, my dear. Uh, I might add, written by myself. Its title, The Legend of Joaquin Muria. Muria? Who was he? An outlaw, he ran all over California a few years back. Oh, you don't do him justice, Mr. Favor. Muria was more than just an outlaw. He was a, he was a tradition. An enigma, a legend in his own time. It's a man who's called Robin Hood and Butcher. Savior and Satan. So what? Muria is dead. You're right, Mr. Fever. A Muria is dead. The posse even cough his head as evidence of their victory. But whose head was it? As I recall, at one time, there were seven Californios who read it under the name of Murrieta. Still doesn't prove anything. Not in itself, it doesn't. But consider this possibility. One incident which has become still another legend about Joaquin. Suppose he escaped. Suppose the posse killed the wrong man. Where could Murrieta go? Back to Mexico where there's a price on his head. And suddenly there was no haven in California. There could only be one real sanctuary. The mountain wilderness east of California where an isolated Indian tribe gave him peace that the world could not offer. All right, is that all? No, oh, just two more things, Mr. Mingo. Murrieta's wife was a girl called Maria. When he first came to California, the miners called him Red Eyes. It's not bad enough that we have to die. Now it seems we'll have to die for a ghost. Many men have known Marias. Many men were called white eyes. Some of them have even found a new life among the savages. All right, suppose I am a reincarnation of a legend. Huh? Suppose I am Joaquin Murrieta. Suppose I am a legend of flesh and blood and bones. Would that change anything? Would that make you die any easier? You want to know if I'm Murrieta? There's only one way to know. When they come, you look at me. And if I'm smiling, then you know that I'm Murrieta. Because he would love to see the blood flow out of your veins. Because only your screams can blot out the cry. The scream of his Maria when you killed her. 
It was you and your people, your kind, that did it. It was your kind that destroyed Joaquin Murieta and molded him as an animal without dignity, without honor. Anyways, whatever Domingo is or isn't, it just doesn't matter. We're all in this together, like it or not. Butler. Try this, Delilah. <clears throat> it won't uh, kick back. Being kicked around is the story of my life, Bo. enough to think for itself, but at least it's hot. How much is left? Uh, that's about it. Any other provisions? Two cans of beans, a little flour, and about a quart of water. A little do. Well, how long, Mr. Favor? As long as it takes. Two days, three. We'll be out of here by then. The place where optimism best flourishes, Mr. Favor, is in the mind of a fool. Logic and he argues that the food you have will last longer. There is one less mouth to feed. Mr. Mango, my apologies, sir, for the theatrics of last night. Call it the prerogative of an actor. A bad one at that. Butler, what are you doing? The only thing I can do, play a scene. The most important of my life. Oh. 
Even the failure, my dear, is entitled to his one moment. Let her get back in here! Uh, don't be a fool. Firearms. A wise man once said, I have come here not to bury you, but to praise you. I am not wise, nor have I come to bury or praise. I am here only to reason. Do you hear? Do you understand? Please, you must listen. There are two women in there. They mean nothing to you. Let them go. Here. here there is money here. Enough money to buy anything. There must be some way I can make you understand. Please. You did that! You killed him! You sent him out there! And you... Nora! No man can force the corpse to walk. You heard him wanting to die. Why? Why? Is right there in your eyes, lady. There's stone dry. Maybe we should all go out there and end this. No, no, no. Not like that. What difference does it make how, as long as it has to be? The difference between iron wheels and cobblestones and painted idols in the forgotten world. Only a coward sneaks to his death. The longer we stay in here, the better chance we got. I stopped believing in miracles years ago. I just can't fight anymore. You don't have to, Chacha. They want to take me alive. And for that, they would follow me all the way to the river Styx. You give me one hour. By that time, I will lead them halfway to Sangre de Cristo. When they have what they want, they will not take the time to double back. If you stay here, you still got a chance. You're wrong, amigo. I never had a chance. Not up on the mountains, and not down here. Mr. Domingo. You're right, senorita. No man can run away from himself, nor can he give himself peace, not alone. One hour. I'll give you some cover. Earth has no sorrow, senora, that heaven cannot cure. If you cannot cry for him, cry for yourself. You know how to use one of these things? I know which end goes off. You start firing when I... Just give me time to make them get their heads down. Good luck. Man uh, makes his own luck, amigo. Mr. Domingo. I only wish there was another way. For wet eyes, there's only one way.
what he said. The last thing we saw him do was smile. Then it really was Joaquin Murrieta. When he left me, Mr. Fever, he was smiling. <laughs>